My lovely, lovely imps, it is with great pleasure that I get to report on the uh, continued downfall of Twitter at the hands of its incompetent, uh, egotistical, and wholly undeserving owner, uh, Elon Musk, once again. Uh, as you all know, um, I have been on Twitter, like, historically for quite a while, and I used to quite enjoy the platform um, because it used to actually work to some degree. It's always had issues. I've always been able to talk about those issues, but since Elon Musk took over, um, Twitter, now supposedly called X, even though everybody still goes to Twitter and it still just takes you to Twitter, whatever, um, uh, it, it used to actually function. It literally just doesn't work properly anymore. There is gore all over the timeline. There is, um, advertisements showing up next to extremely offensive content. There's a, there's an absolutely rampant misinformation pro uh, 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 problem. There are um, literal scams being promoted as ads. There are viruses being promoted as ads. And there are also uh, people who just pay a couple of bucks to have their stupid opinion automatically boosted to the top of conversations, no matter how stupid and wrong it actually is. Because you can just pay for visibility on the website now. And not even as an ad. It won't be marked as an ad. So there are companies who have accounts with with Twitter Blue, and they use that to basically functionally run ads that circumvent the the laws about ads. Because normally, if something's an ad, you have to mark it as an ad by law. But if you're just if you're just posting an opinion as a Blue Twitter Premium user that just conveniently also supports a product that you're selling, well, you've got a way around it. But even still, even with all of that that I just said, Twitter's falling apart. And one of the biggest reasons that Twitter is falling apart is because it has experienced a apocalyptic uh, advertiser flight. Uh, advertisers, uh, the biggest advertisers that previously used to buy a lot of money worth of ads in Twitter have left. Some of them have come back, but they have come back in heavily reduced quantities. Um, and almost none of the advertisers who previously bought large quantities on Twitter um, are uh, back to the to in any way close to the the quantity of ad buys that they were doing before. And it only gets worse because today something very funny happened, which we are going to watch right now. Let's enjoy this extended clip uh, from um, the New York Times Deal Book Summit. Summit. Let's do it. Let's do it, shall we? Public perception that, and, and you're clarifying this now. Um, For those who don't know, this guy who uh, looks uh, kind of like a, um, a Wojak, who kind of looks like the one Wojak with the little, uh, the little Adam's apple that goes, uh, 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 that one, he looks almost, he pretty much looks basically like the profile of that guy. Uh, that's Elon Musk. That's the current owner of, uh, of Twitter, AKA X.com. But there's a public perception that that was part of a apology tour, if you will, that there this had been said online. There was all of the criticism. There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger I hope today. they stop. You hope, uh, don't advertise. Wow. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. But go fuck yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I, I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. Well, well, let me ask you then. So that's, um, by the way, that's him. Um, that's him calling out. Uh, uh, the, I believe the CEO of Disney. Um. Yeah, Hel as Hellhound says, not giving me money is apparently blackmailing. Me taking, me taking a giant dump on the product that was already on shaking grounds and then people saying, I don't want to buy a product that has human feces on it is apparently blackmail. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating.
Sirius says, is he even allowed to say this? Like, isn't it a violation of fiduciary responsibility to say that you don't want to make money like this? Um, I've seen people make that argument, but I don't actually know. Um, I'm not a lawyer, and so I don't know what how, how far that goes. Um, but I do imagine that this is going to be absolutely devastating for the remaining stockholders. Regardless of whether he's violated any laws of like financial laws as his position, um, you know, his legally empowered position as an owner of a, a registered company. I don't know if he's violated any laws, but I can tell you this is not going to go well with anyone who has any interest in Twitter, which means the decline is only going to get even worse. And I just want you I just want to point out that like there is no world in which this is even remotely like based or interesting. Um, like, it's just cringe. It just comes off as like a 14 year old who's giga mad. Like the guy asked him a very serious question about like, hey, there's been a massive problem with anti-Semitism on the platform that a lot of people have brought up and not just anti-Semitism, but other things as well. What, how do you respond to this? And he's basically like, fuck you, man, fuck you. He's doing like a Cartman routine. Did you notice the IDF dog tags? Oh yeah. Um, is that what they are? Is that what that is? Is that a, is that that square is an IDF dog tag? Also, remember, it's been a long time since we've talked about this, but just remember that um that a lot of his um it uh, his investors at this current measure are a handful of mega investors. The Saudi royal family was one of his biggest investors, a single large investor that is now seeing him say, I'm intentionally going to tank this, this platform that you gave me billions of dollars for. It's actually incredible. His meltdown is phenomenal. Oh yeah, those are, that's an IDF dog tag. Holy shit. Why do they look like that? Oh, there are squares. That's so strange. Yeah, he recently went on a um, on a press tour to Israel and was taking tons and tons of photos with Netanyahu. It's actually it's actually shocking how blatant his uh, how blatant his attempts to like a uh, 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 ward off criticism is he's like look i'm standing here with netanyahu you can't complain about anti-semitism because i'm hanging out with this one conservative leader of israel oh man it's just incredible just an incredible level of of soy brained uh reddit brained let up dude behavior incredible anyway let's keep watching that's how i feel don't about, advertise how do you think then about the economics of, of X, if, 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 if part of the underlying model- Show this to stream. Oh, okay. So there's a close up of it or like a, oh yeah, it is. Yep, it definitely is. There's the picture and there's what an IDF dog tag looks like. So yeah, he's definitely wearing an IDF dog tag here. Oh man, that's such like a, that's just such a, that's such a dumb guy way of deflecting criticism. That's such a, such a dumb guy way of deflecting criticism. Incredible. Well, at least today, and maybe it needs to shift. Maybe the answer is it needs to shift away from advertising. Um, if, if you believe- it, it sounds like a bit from The Office, right? Where like Michael Scott gets accused of like, uh, Michael Scott gets accused of doing anti-Semitism. And so like the next day he comes in and he like is wearing a like, uh, he's wearing like a kippah on his head and he's like, I bought this at the Jewish store in downtown. How dare you call me anti-Semitic? It's very Michael Scott energy. I'm like 80% sure that actually happens in the office. I believe that this is the one part of your business where you will be beholden to those who uh, have this view. G what do you do? F. Why? I, I understand that, but there's a reality. Oh my God, he literally thinks he's so funny. 
Oh my, oh man, look at this, look at this, look at the head jiggle that he does, the turkey bobble. Please watch the turkey bobble with me. I, I understand that, but there's a reality too, <laughs> right? Yes, no, no. It, it, I, I mean, Linda no, Yaccarino's right here, and she's uh, got to sell uh, advertising. Uh, absolutely. So, um, no, no, it, totally. So, so. Linda Yaccarino on Suicide Watch at the moment. Listen, Linda Yaccarino seems like a giant, giant asshole and a really dishonest person. But at the same time, I feel like her mental state must be so bad right now. I cannot even imagine what it would be like to be so publicly associated with a company and then just watch that company because of this like this like bob bobble headed chuckle fuck intentionally tanking the company. What I'm saying is I feel the smallest drop of sympathy for for the for the girl boss gatekeep gaslight Linda Yaccarino. No, no. Actually, what what this advertising boycott is uh, is is going to do? It's it's going to kill the company. And you think that the I, I, but, and the whole world will know that those advertisers killed the company, and we will document it in great detail. Dude, oh, it's done, man. I shit in the cheeseburger and they wouldn't buy it and it's gonna kill the company that they didn't buy the cheeseburger and the history books will show that they wouldn't buy the cheeseburger with shit in it and it will be their fault that the company died because they wouldn't eat the shitty cheeseburger that I cooked for them. The history books will show this guy unironically if I, if I hadn't been following Elon Musk's deranged behavior for the last, like, I don't even know, half a decade, I don't even remember when I first learned about this guy. By the way, I have really old school claim to being a old school, uh, uh, son of <laughs> Oops, I pressed the wrong, <laughs> I pressed the wrong one. I meant to do the sus button and I hit the left. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> oh, oh my! <laughs> I was gonna say, um, like way back when pe when everybody was jerking him off on Reddit, I had I had the biggest sus of him ever. I was like, this guy seems like a total charlatan and a complete fraud. And there were people, there were people in my life at that time who actually got mad at me because I, because they were like, why can't you see that he's a genius inventor? And I was like, he's not. I don't see that he's invented anything. I've seen he's bought a lot of shit. And this was like years ago now. Let's see. I'm trying to think what year it actually would have been. It would have been almost eight years ago now when these conversations happened where I was like, I don't buy this guy's crap. And now look at where we are. Okay. But again, if I hadn't been aware of this guy's behavior for the last eight years, um, this would be surprising to me. And I would have to say, I think this guy is on drugs. And I do actually think he's probably on drugs, but I think he's always on drugs. This is some of the most weirdest, uh, like unhinged, just completely stupid and irrational behavior. No matter how you slice this, him just saying the company's going to die and it's because the advertisers won't buy the product is just stupid. You don't have to be, whether you're a right winger, whether you, the only people that this is based to is people who are in his personality cult. And those people are a lost cause. Like they're, they're done. Okay. But like no one, there's no side of the issue. Everyone can see that this is the dumbest thing that's ever occurred. But there are those advertisers I imagine are going to say, they're going to say, we didn't kill the company. Oh yeah. They're going to say, tell it to, tell it to earth. Tell it to the, tell it to earth? What? <laughs> tell it to your mom and all the other moms on the planet earth. They won't, maybe they'll still make you pizza rolls, but they'll be able to see that it was the advertiser's fault. I gotta, I gotta see this again. I'm sorry. This is so, 
deranged company. Oh, yeah. They're going to say tell it to, tell it to Earth. But they're going to say that they're going to say, Elon, that you killed the company because you said these things and that they were inappropriate things and that they didn't feel comfortable on the platform. Right. That's, see, that's and, what and they're going to say. And let's see how Earth responds to that. Okay, this, then this. Is there more? I want to see more of this. Does anybody have a full link to this? If anybody can get me the full link to this, it's like, I would love to see more of this. I want to see just how ridiculous it gets. Because there's more. This is not all of it. That was like a longer clip, but that's not the whole thing. I want to see more. There's a lot of bonus content tonight, but I'm making sure that we all eat well, okay? We're eating well for the holidays. Look at this. We got the full thing. It's posted as a goddamn Twitter video. Let's do it. You hope... Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so is, much, is Mycena. Try to blackmail me with... Shout out to Mycena. Thank you so much. Let's do it. Let's do this. Advertising? Blackmail me with money? Go fuck yourself. But... Go fuck yourself. Is that clear? Uh, I hope he had to say it like four times before anybody even laughed. And the first, the first laugh sounded like somebody crying out in pain. It is. Hey, Bob. If you're in the audience. Well, well, let me ask you then. That's how I feel. Don't about, advertise. How do you think then about the economics of of X? If if if. If part of the underlying model, at least today, and maybe it needs to shift, maybe the answer is it needs to shift away from advertising. Um, if, if you believe that this is the one part of your business where you will be beholden to those who uh, have this view, what do you do? F Y. I, I understand that, but there's a reality too, <laughs> right? Yes. No, no. I, I, I mean, Linda no, Yaccarino is right here, and she's got to sell advertising. I, I, absolutely. So, um, no, no, totally. So, so no, no, actually, what, what this advertising boycott is, uh, is, is going to do, it's, it's going to kill the company. Why GFY? It means go fuck yourself. That's what GFY means. And do you think that the company... I, I, but, and the whole world will know that those advertisers killed the company, and we will document it in great detail. But there are, those advertisers, I imagine, are going to say, they're going to say, we didn't kill the company. Oh, yeah? They're going to say... Tell it to, tell it to Earth. But they're going, to say that, they're going to say, Elon, that you killed the company because you said these things and that they were inappropriate things and that they didn't feel comfortable on the platform, right? Yeah, this video is an hour and 25 minutes, Posadas John. We got, we got a bit to buckle in for. We'll watch the rest of the, um, the, rest of the Elon Musk one. We'll go from there. Um, also, it's really funny... Um, that he says, like, go tell it to Earth, because that is the most Reddit attitude ever. He's like, I'll show you in the up dudes. You'll see. My when I say that the that the company wasn't um wasn't destroyed by me, but instead was destroyed by the people who refused to buy my bad product. Well, they'll show you with the I'll get more upvotes than you, and that will show you. He's literally stuck in Reddit brain. It's so funny. That's, that's what and they're going to say. And let's see how Earth responds to that. So let me, okay, this, then this goes back to we'll the... We'll both make our cases. Right. And we'll see what the outcome is. Oh my God! We didn't even see this part before. That's what I literally just said. We'll both make our posts and we'll see who gets more updates. Good sir, I'll see you on the forums. What are the economics of that for you? I mean, you, you have enormous resources, so you can actually keep this company going for a very long time. Would you keep it going for a long time if there was no advertising? I mean, if the company fails because of an advertised boycott, it will fail because of an advertised boycott. And that will be what bankrupted the company, and that's what everybody on Earth will know.
What do you think then of the? I, I guess, this goes back to the idea that? of everybody on Oif. Oif. I mean, yeah, he was. That was like he was like struggling to get through that sentence, but trust though, then and it'll I, be gone, and it'll be gone because of an advertiser boycott. But but you recognize that some of those people are going to say that they didn't feel comfortable on the platform, and I I, wonder, I just wonder and ask you and think about that for a Tell second. Tell it to the judge. What the Tell it to the judge. Is, does he think that the, that he's like a like 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 a like an action movie guy delivering one-liners? This is straight up. This is like fedora tipping behavior. Yeah, <laughs> tell it to the judge. What 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 are you talking about? Let the let the voice chat records recording show that I won. I won in this Xbox Live lobby. But the judge is going to be... Uh, the judge is the public. And you think that the public is going to say that, that Disney is making a mistake? Yes. And they're going to boycott Disney? They already are. Dude. <laughs> Dude. Oh man, this is okay. Not to like not to make an appeal you know to the grand liberal arts to the humanities, but this is uh this is some like Greek tragedy level of hubris. This is that is this is hubris on display on an unbelievable level. The idea that he thinks that Disney is going to suffer a meaningful boycott because people are mad that Twitter doesn't work as good as it used to and that advertise like d actual insanity, like literal actual, you have to actually be completely disconnected from reality. Not just slightly, completely. This is, it, 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 this is like legendary, uh, 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 Tales of the Ancients level of, of hubris. Incredible. Just amazing. Well, there, there are some that are for, for, for lots of different reasons, but you think that this is going to, that you have the, this goes to actually the interesting of, of, of power and leverage. Let the chips fall where they may. Hey, oh, hey, dude, I got one for you. Hold on, Elon, Elon, try. That's how the cookie crumbles. Hit him with the cookie crumbles next. I'm serious, bro. Hit him with the cookie crumbles. We got the chips. We got the earth will tell. We got tell him to the judge. Hit him with the cookie crumble. Let the chips fall where they may. Can I ask what, why that is the approach? And I, I ask it. This guy is trying so hard not to laugh right now. It's actually so funny. I bet that this guy, the moment that he gets a chance to go backstage, is going to laugh until he pisses himself. I bet this guy's going to remember this moment for the rest of his goddamn career. I don't know anything about this guy, but I can just, I, I just got to read. Softest leftist with a tier two sub says, God damn, I didn't expect to get a second Thanksgiving meal. We are feasting tonight. We are feasting tonight. Indeed. Thank you so much for supporting the show. If you're watching right now, whether this is as a video form, or live on the stream right now, please give me your likes. They're free and I deeply appreciate them and make sure you're subscribed to Demon Mama. Let's continue. Because you've been What's very- What's approach? Well, you've been very particular about, the, I mean, the approach to Tesla, uh, when you think about the engineering involved in that, the approach to SpaceX, the approach to um, some of the stuff you're doing with, with AI has been very specific, right? There's not a let, let the chips fall where they may approach to those businesses, I don't think. No, we focus on making the best products. And, and, and Tesla has gotten to where it's gotten with no advertising at all. I, what is his shirt? Why does his shirt have this random block of text here? What is this? Has anybody, has anybody done an analysis on what this is? It looks like it's got like a, like a, like a bit of children's homework left on it. I understand that. Tesla currently sells uh, two twice as much uh, in terms of electric vehicles as the rest of uh, electric car makers in, in the United States combined. Tesla has done more to help the environment than uh, 
all other companies combined. It would be fair to say that, therefore, as a leader of the company, I've done more for the environment than everyone else, any single human on Earth. Man. Dude. This is something else. Yasmin, with the $5, thank you so much. I'm waiting for Elon to unironically say that his old colleagues will rue the day they they picked him last for high-tech kickball. Jesus Christ. Yeah, this is this is genuinely... I mean, I, I don't know. Like, he's, like, s seriously struggling to deliver his lines. Like, what the fuck? How do you feel about that? No, no, I, I, but... No, how do personally. I feel about that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm asking you personally how you feel about that because this goes, we're talking about power and influence and... I'm, and saying, I'm saying what I, what, what I care about is the, the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. And what I see all over the place is people who care about looking good while doing evil. You say, while your company is in the middle of a massive scandal over... Uh, hate content being served next to advertisers, which is being driven by advertisers to the degree that you are saying it's an advertiser boycott. <laughs> Chariot says, well, you know, it's like they say, I, uh, I used to ro roll the dice, f feel, feel the fear in my enemy's eyes, listen as the crowd would sing. You know now the old king is dead. Long live the ki king. Fuck them. Okay? Let me ask you th th this, because I think part of this, by the way, there's some people who said, look, owning X to begin with has just created problems, that you've created so many amazing things that are changing our world. And, and, I, and I know you want to uh, make X a, this fabulous town square free, free speech platform but that unto itself, that that has created such a distraction of all of these things. This is the conversation we're having. We're not focused, or we're not talking at least yet, and we will. Uh, on Tesla, you have your Cybertruck uh, deliveries tomorrow, and everything. Oh my God, he's barely containing himself. The Cybertruck delivery has been entirely bungled, by the way. The whole Cybertruck thing is a massive embarrassment, and everyone knows it. Everyone knows how bad the Cybertruck has been bungled else that you're doing but yes is there any it will be the biggest product launch of anything but by far on earth this year is it the cyber truck is going to be the biggest product launch of anything on earth this entire year that's so insane that's so insane on so many levels it's just wait hold on let me see Hold on, I want to see how many have been are have been delivered. Uh, two days ago, Tesla has been spotted building a a fleet of over twenty five cyber trucks ahead of the launch. Tesla will deliver ten cyber trucks at uh, cyber trucks at the event this month. So somewhere between 10 and 30 cyber trucks are going to be delivered. And he is trying to tell these people with a straight face that this is going to be the biggest product launch on the entire planet Earth for the entire year of 2023. I'm pretty sure, like I'm not even joking, that hot dog stands in New York City have had more substantial product launches by opening their door for the day than uh, 25 to 30 cyber trucks being delivered to, to certain customers after massive delays. Is there any part of you, though, that just says, ah, you know what, I just shouldn't have done this, or maybe I should sell it or give it away or do something else with, 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 the, with the X piece of it? Yeah. Given, given, given the propensity for some of the things that you do and say on that platform to
to create these these issues. Yeah. Of all the posts uh, I've done on the platform, I think there might be 30,000 or something like that. Right. Once in a while, I will say something foolish. And I have. And I would certainly put uh, that comment, um, that you said the actual truth, uh, in, among perhaps one of the most foolish, if not the most foolish thing I've ever done on the platform. Um, I, I, and I did oh, yeah. Do... So what they're referring to here, by the way, just for context, for those who might not be up on the Elon Musk news, what he's referring to here is um, when he replied to a, uh, a guy who was quote tweeting a thread about Hitler. Um, a, a person was, was like, um, does anybody have the link? I would love to be able to show the actual thing. Does anybody have the link? Um, it was him saying the, the Jewish question was true. That's what he was saying. It was somebody said like, oh, what is something that Hitler got correct? And someone quoted, quote tweeted that, the, the question about what Hitler got correct with the Jewish question. And then he responded by saying, this is the actual truth. From his enormous account, he boosted explicit Nazi propaganda positively to all of his followers. Insane. Actually insane. Actual, unironic, just no questions asked, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, nothing, no doubts can be shed on this whatsoever Nazi shit. My best to clarify uh, afterwards that, uh, you know, I, I certainly do not mean anything anti-Semitic in that. Um, the, the nature of the criticism was simply that... Here's the, here's the one. Yeah, here we go. Here you go, right here. This is the actual tweet right here. To the cowards hiding behind the anonymity of the internet and posting, quote unquote, Hitler was right. You got something you want to say? Why don't you say it to our faces? So that's this one. They're saying, uh, you, you, you cowards who are, who are saying uh, shit like Hitler was right. You got something you want to say? Why don't you say it to our faces? This guy responds and says, and I quote, Jewish communities have been pushing the exact type of dialectical hatred against whites they claim to want to stop people using against them. And this is a giant post, and Elon Musk just directly responds to it by saying, you have said the actual truth. Yeah, just no joke. This guy says, why are you saying Hitler was right? This guy says, here's why Hitler was right. And he goes, yeah, you've spoken the truth here, bro. Which means, like, very, I, I don't know, like, it's pretty obvious what he just did there. Like, it, it's so obvious. And you now understand why there's a giant situation. There was already, there was already massive critiques about his platform for the 900 other times he's done shit like this, but this was just open. And of course, every single fucking advertiser was like, dude, what the fuck? Um, the Jewish people have been persecuted for thousands of years. There is a natural affinity, therefore, uh, for persecuted groups. Um, this has led to the funding of organizations that uh, essentially promote any persecuted group or any group with the perception of persecution. This includes radical Islamic groups. Everyone what? here has seen the, the, the massive demonstrations mm -hmm. for Hamas. Imagine, imagine saying that Hitler spoke the absolute truth. Imagine telling a Nazi that they're speaking the truth about Hitler being correct and then trying to pin it on Islamist extremist groups. Do you think anybody is going to buy this? Like anybody. Do you think, look, I, look, I've been very open in this conversation that I have never trusted Elon Musk from the start. I have, I, have, I have been a longtime critic of Elon Musk, but be real. If you're watching this right now, be real. Do you think anyone will buy this? Like anyone outside of people who literally have like his shriveled balls jammed down into their fucking esophagus. Uh, anybody but that do you think is going to buy that for real? In every major city in the West. That should be jarring. Well, a, a, a number of those organizations received funding f from prominent people in the Jewish community. Right. 
They didn't ex oh wait, oh wait, he's just fully defending the JQ again here. He said that was the foolish, the most foolish thing he's ever done, and now he's just JQing on national television. Oh, incredible. Oh man, incredible. Expect that to happen. It man. It, but, but if you generically, right. w without condition, uh, sort of fund, if, if, you, if you fund persecuted groups in general, it, some of those persecuted groups, unfortunately, want your annihilation. And what, I'm, what I meant by that, mm -hmm. when I subsequently clarified, is, is that it's unwise when, when, you, when you accidentally JQ and lose not accidentally. When you intentionally JQ on Twitter and then lose all of your subscribe all of your subscriber and get down duded to hell, and so then you go on national TV to get down duded to hell by actually JQing on national TV. There you have it. That's the this is the, this is a real photo, a real photo of 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 the inside of his soul. To f to to find organizations that support groups that want your annihilation. Is this coming across my, my, clearly? Yeah, no, it point? is. My, my question to you, though, I, is, I think is, logic... it, is... Is he bleeding? Is his nose bleeding? Does he have a bloody nose? Support groups that want your annihilation. Does he... Did blood just... I'm not even joking. Is, does he have a bloody nose? Is that what actually just happened here? He turns his head, and there's not. I mean, it could be an artifact, but it really looks like it looks like he's got a bloody nose. Is this coming across? My, oh my God! Yeah, there it is. is. My, my question to you, though, I, is, I, think, is, I don't think that's an artifact. Maybe it is an artifact, but it doesn't. It looks like it, it actually looks like he's got a bloody nose. It, it could be. It could be an artifact. Logically, is there, this is, makes a lot of sense. Is there any part of you? I mean, just tell me what happens, <laughs> though, when once all of this happens. Let's say you fund a group, and that group supports right. Hamas, who wants you to die. Perhaps you should not fund them. Right. <laughs> but you, but you do. But, Thank you. Well, he did do the Wario face there. I, he stole my joke. I, I put the Wario up there, I put him up there doing the Wario face, and then he just does it in real life. I can't even parody this guy. I literally can't even parody it. Yeah, he's literally, he's, he's, he's pulling a yay. This is, this is like yay level. <laughs> you, you do appreciate that when you wade into these very delicate waters, at these very delicate times, Yes that it can create a real, I mean, as it created headlines for the past two weeks and, and economic impact. What, what, I'm just so curious what happened in your brain I mean, when you see all this happening, I, I think are you we, sitting there going, oh my God, I stepped in it. I wish I didn't do that. Are you saying, screw yes. them. I hate these people. No, Why no. are they after me? But all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs> yeah, all of that. I mean, uh, I mean, look, I, I'm sorry for that, that, that tweet or post. It was foolish of me. Dude, but you just repeated the rhetoric. You just almost exactly repeated the rhetoric in the tweet that you're supposedly apologizing for. And everybody can tell. Everybody can fucking tell. Of the 30,000, it might be literally the worst and dumbest tweet post that I've ever done. Um, and I try to my best to clarify uh, six ways to Sunday. Um, but, uh, you know, at least uh, I think over time it will be obvious that, in fact, far from being uh, anti Semitic, I'm in fact philo Semitic. Okay, yeah, it, it actually looks, um, it actually looks, uh, uh, it looks like this might be like a really weird shadow or something or like a weird divot in his skin. It really did look like he got a bloody nose. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and my, all the evidence uh, in my track record would, uh, would support that. Let me ask um, you this, though. There are people who say crazy things on, on X, as you know. Um, well, maybe you think they're crazy, it, maybe it, they're not. It, 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 the, 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 the aspiration for X is to be the global town square. Now, if you were to walk down to, let's say, 
Times Square. Right. Um, do you occasionally hear people saying crazy things? Yes, but yes. they're not. But they don't have the megaphone, right? And that's that's the conundrum. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah, Posadas John, it's the Hitler mustache growing in in real time. <laughs> It's like it's like one of those uh, Animorphs covers, but it's like him, but with a like, Hitler mustache appearing. <laughs> they can only say it to the fifty or one hundred people that are that are sitting, standing there in Times Square. They don't have a mega. I mean, look, the, the, the joke I used to make about old Twitter was it was like giving everyone in the psych ward a megaphone. Um, so, uh, dude, you made it. You made it so that people can just pay money to have their voices boosted, and it's apparent on every post. You can go to literally any post and you will scroll down and you have to scroll through a bunch of people saying the dumbest things you can possibly imagine. It will literally be like a, an, an incoherent sentence full of misspellings on every single post on the internet now. Every single one. And now you're saying that like old Twitter was with a, with a fucking psych word megaphone dude? Are you crazy? Obviously, he's crazy. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that things can get promoted uh, that are negative beyond the sort of circle of, of somebody simply screaming crazy things in Times Square, which happens all the time. Um, you know, so, so the, it, it's, it's actually it's, it's pretty rare for something, um, frankly, that is uh, hateful to be promoted. It's not... It's not Dude. You did it from your account as the owner of Twitter with one of the biggest accounts and the and it has been proven that he boosts his own reach. And you didn't just like accidentally promote something. You promoted a post that was saying that Hitler said things right. And you said that, it, oh my God, Jesus Christ. It's not that it never happens, um, but it's, it's fairly rare. Um, I mean, I would encourage people to look at, for those that use the system, when you look at the, the sort of the, the feed that you receive, uh, how, how often is it, is it hateful? And over time, has it gotten more or less hateful? And I would say that if, if you look at uh, the X platform today versus a year ago, I think it is actually much better. I mean, what, what is your are, personal are you, experience? Are you surprised? I'm just curious. You use this. I use the platform. Uh, Religiously, I, I so you would admit notice. to being an addict, you and notice. I use the for you, and I will. I will say uh, now the the problem is because I'm a journalist, I go looking for stuff. Well, that's I'm, I'm not just, I'm just saying, and, and, <laughs> and because I and, and I, I also think the algorithm for me personally, because I'm looking for stuff, also is feeding me other things. It, um, well, it, this 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 is actually a, a challenge in that, it, it, like sometimes people will say, like, why is it showing me? Could Elon be fixed by mass gooning? No. No, I don't even think the gooners have the power. I don't even think the most concentrated goon sesh you've possibly imagined in the most perfectly feng shui goon cave could manage to generate enough energy to fix this man. I think he's gone. I think he's too far gone. Not even, not even the most powerful gooners could reach him. Uh, you know, a post from this person that I hate. And, and we were like, well, did you interact a lot with this person that you hate? Well, yes. Well. Therefore, it thinks that you want to interact more with this person. Nah, this is complete bullshit, and he knows it. This is complete and utter bullshit. He could have made he could have made this argument plausibly under old Twitter, but under new Twitter, we know how it works. the The information about how the fucking timeline works is has been published, and not only that, he himself openly said that blue checks get promoted to people. So this doesn't fly here because, by his own admission, blue checks who might be people that you hate, can pay to appear on your For You page and in your comments. It's that simple. It's that simple. That you hate. That's like a right. reasonable, Let me ask this. you know, do you, 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 you kind of want you, to have an argument. When you tweet, yeah. do you ever post. Say, or post? Let's say post. When you post. I mean, listen, I'm open. Right. If anyone can come up with a better word. Uh, that would be great. When you post, um, though... But uh, you, the least bad word I can think of is post. Uh, it's a, yeah. When you post, though, do you, are you trying to rile up either a base or an audience? Do you, do you, do you recognize the power you have in that? And, and also, by the way, not just rile up, <coughs> rile up one version of, side yeah. of it, but also rile down, which is to say, 
as I said, there are people who are demonstrably anti-Semitic uh, on, on the site. Who I, I get uh, Jew boy things and all sorts of things that come sure. my way. Hey, for uh, a while, they thought I was Jewish, so they would, you know, I'd get it too. But, but, but no, but the question... Dude. Oh, dude, come on. Is, My name you, is Super George. Do you ever think to yourself, you know what, I'm going to go online and I'm going to say, these people, I condemn these people that are on my site saying these things. Because I, mean, I, think I have said, a, I have, you, know, you say I've condemned anti-Semitism, but do you ever go? Yeah, I said I've condemned, con- I, literally, I literally posted I condemn anti-Semitism in all its forms. Like, that is a literal, I believe, literal post that I made. Um, <laughs> while saying that Hitler had it, that was correct. That's what you, you t- tweeted that while saying Hitler was correct, bro. Dude, you're so cooked. He's so fucking cooked. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, listen, if I can get out the thesaurus if you, you know. Delance says, I think he needs to go to either rehab or a care clinic. No, he's beyond that. Okay, when, when this is a guy who, he, he won't do that. His problem is not going to be solved by rehab, okay? Because he won't go to rehab. He's convinced that he's, he just spent the last 10 minutes of this talking about how he's a god among men and how Earth itself is going to reject Disney. He believes that his website is going to cause the downfall of Disney. He stated that um, he believes that he is the, the most impactful environmentalist who has ever lived. The, the level, there's no amount of rehab or anything can help him with this. He, his brain is completely gone. He has a god complex while being a total moron. We could, you know. Uh, let me ask you a different question. You, you, yeah. you, you compose it. I'll post it. Okay. Let me ask you this. Um, <laughs> you, um, you were on a, you were on a podcast, <laughs> right? on a podcast uh, about a month ago, and you said something that, that struck me, um, and it struck me as accurate. Came out of your mouth, so uh, hopefully it is. But it, it, I, I'm hoping we go deep on this. Just because it came out of my mouth does not mean it's true. No, no, I, but you, I, I said, you said my mind is a storm. I I'm going to hit that every single time he makes a fucking dud-ass joke. I think most people would want to be me. They may think they want to be me, but they don't know. They don't understand. What did you mean by that? What was... What, 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 your Oh man, this is such a good question. Can we listen to the, oh, I wish we could listen to the question again without, hold on, 1328, 13, can we go down to like, here, let's listen to the question again. That is such a killer question. It's true. No, no, but you said, you said my my mind is a storm. I don't think most people (laughs) would want to be me. They may think they want to be me, but they don't know. They don't understand. What did you mean by that? What was what, 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 your mind being a storm? And I, I think it. I mean, I, I have known you for quite some time. I think it is a bit of a storm. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, in as much as a, a weather metaphor makes sense, um, I, my mind is often feels like a like a like a very wild storm. Um, I mean, I have I have a fountain of ideas. I mean, I have more ideas than I could possibly execute. Um, so I have no shortage of ideas. Innovation is not the, not the problem. Execution is the problem. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Do you hear that helicopter? This is what these motherfuckers do over our house every single goddamn day. Not every day. It's like every other week for like hours. God, it's the worst. Sirius says, this is a sincere question. It's very funny to make fun of him for this, but is there an argument to be made that some of his behaviors, inappropriate laughing, repeating himself, are a part of autism? Like, what's the line for what's off limits? This isn't a condemnation. It's just something that I've been wrestling with because I do know, I do some of the, no, I'm sorry. I will not let you, I will not let you uh, smear the autism community by trying to give Elon Musk the neurodivergent and a minor argument. Uh, This is not just idiosyncrasies. And most of what we've made fun of is him not just repeating lines, but specifically repeating lines like, (laughs) tell it to the earth. (laughs) Tell it to the galaxy, bro. Tell it to the galaxy. Come on. 
Come on. Come on. No. Come on. I've got a million ideas. I mean, I've got a, an entire design for an electric supersonic vertical. Yo, Tippy! Tipster and all of the tipsterites, welcome. Come in, come in, come in, get comfortable. If you've never been to my website, come on over to demonmama.com forward slash live. It's super comfy over here, easy to log into, and we have amazing emotes and a ton of wonderful, beautiful people over here. Thank you so much, Tipster, for the raid. Deeply appreciate it. Deeply appreciate the love, and I hope you're having a wonderful night. We're having a wild time. We are having a good old time. Hey, Tipster, good to see you in chat. Take off jet, but I, I mean, I just, if I, I just can't do that as well. I've had that for 10 years. Um, um, and there's a million things. Um, is your storm a happy storm? <laughs> oh, dude! <laughs> no. It's not a happy story. <laughs> Log off! You are a billionaire! You could literally stop everything you're doing right now and go and live in a palace in the woods and you would have no problem. And you're sitting on here telling everyone to go fuck themselves, trying to claim that the, the Tesla cyber trunk, trunk dud launch is going to be the hottest thing that has ever happened on Earth, the biggest product launch of all time. Oh my God, somebody should have asked him if it was gonna be bigger than Microsoft Windows. This guy is incredible, incredible. Is it a happy storm? No. No, I live a sad life, a darkened life, post sad image of Batman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows this image. Everyone knows this one. The time where he was like doing the Marquis de Sade thing. The famous image, but honestly, does anybody have the um does anybody have the tweet where Elon Musk posted sad Batman? Because that one was legendary. That was truly legendary. Yeah. Tell us about that, because I, I think that that actually, it, when people try to really understand you, I think that there's a lot of this comes from some other place. And I want. Oh yeah, everybody. Yeah, this is another one that gets posted all the time. Him posting posting with the fucking katana in front of the American flag. There is a large graveyard filled with my enemies. I do not wish to add to it, but I will if given no choice. Those who pick fights with me do so at their own peril, but maybe this is their lucky day. I want to talk about that. What do you think that is? <laughs> we should we need like a psychiatrist couch here or something. Um. Serious, look, um, lots of people laugh nervously, okay? Lots and lots of people make, look, like, I, I, I can't, I can't feel, I can't help but feel like maybe there, there's a connection being missed here, okay? People do embarrassing things all the time, and people uh, have minor embarrassments, but the the cat the, the the thing that separates them from Elon Musk is that Elon Musk is a billionaire anti-Semite who um, pretends that he's a god while still having the same flaws and traits as every other humble motherfucker on the planet. Every person you know who's just a normal ass nice person loves their family, takes care of the people around them, and happens to have a, a problem where they nervous laugh in the or 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 say something wrong is completely and utterly separated from a guy who literally thinks that he's a god, goes on a stage, has a whole bunch of things that um, do not, that prove that, that show that he is not actually above anybody else and yet acts as though he is. I, I don't know how to explain the concept of um, poking fun at, uh, at someone's disconnect from their own reality, but I, I tried. All right. I, 
I, you know, I, I think to some degree I was born this way, but and then it was amplified by a difficult childhood, frankly. Um, so. Uh, But I can remember even in happy moments when I was a kid that there's just it just feels like there's just a a rage of forces in my mind constantly. Um, but now this, you know, productively manifests itself in technology and both. Dude, ev at this point, everyone should know he's not an inventor. He hasn't invented things. He didn't invent the Cybertruck. He didn't invent the Tesla. He bought those designs. He bought those designs and then he hired people to refine those designs. He bought PayPal and hired people to refine it. He bought X and has the first thing that he's been super hands on with is covered in muck, covered in diarrhea. things uh, for the most part so and I, and I think on balance the output has been very productive I see that I see that we've entered the territory of I think I think people are um, I think maybe we need to stop the Elon Musk segment because I feel like the amount of um, derangement is giving is like making other people catch derangement as someone who grew up rich but emotionally neglected and physically abused, I'm tired of people dismissing the concept of rich people having a rough childhood. Elon is a piece of shit, but that doesn't mean that he had an okay childhood. Where did anybody say that? Nobody said that. I never said that they can't have a, 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 a bad childhood, but he's a, a multi-millionaire. No, like, I think he was literally a billionaire heir to begin with. And on top of that, this is in a panel where he's being asked, why the fuck is he promoting Nazi ideology on his fucking platform? Can we, can we, can we fucking have a refresh here? Can I have a reset on the sanity button for a minute, please? No one said anything about rich people not being able to have bad experiences. But this guy's sitting on here using his, he's like, I had a really rough childhood, you know? I had, I had a rough childhood and, and it's just resulted in me being such a, a troubled genius. So I just can't help it when sometimes I, you know, see Heil a little bit. Or, or maybe I, I say Hitler did nothing wrong. It's just, it's my rough childhood. Dry, dries his eyes with billions of dollars. People just don't understand me. They don't understand that I had a hard childhood and my brain is so large. Yes! Here's the post! The legendary from 2022. Elon Musk, some nights, posting sad Batman standing on the church roof. Some nights you just don't know. Sometimes you just, you're just Batman standing on a cold roof in winter wrapped in your cape and looking sadly down. Um, I think the results set. Some nights I stay up cashing in my bad luck. Some nights I'm Batman alone. Sometimes I don't have Robin standing by my side. Sometimes I blow up my website. As we, you know, discussed earlier with SpaceX, Tesla, PayPal, which is, you know, still going today. Um, the, uh, First internet company that I started. In fact, the first internet company I started Zip2 was um, uh, funded. Demon Mama, won't you ever think of the billionaires just for once? <laughs> they have a storm in their giant brain.
Everyone, don't you understand how painful it is to sit on your own brain and have to play chess with your own brain matter against your own brain? Don't you understand? You can't even understand what it would like, what it would be like. Your brain is sensitive. Sitting on it isn't comfortable. When your brain gets so big that nobody can beat you at chess except for your own brain, which is also the chessboard. It's the chessboard, you fools. By New York Times Company, yep. Hearst, Knight Ritter, and I fact, uh, we wrote some of the software for the, the New York Times website, right. um, and we helped bring online several hundred uh, newspapers that previously were only in print. Um, now this is in the 90s, which at this point is like, I'm like a grandpa plaque, right, basically. Um, you know, the 90s and internet feels like a pre-Cambrian era when there were only sponges. Dank Catlord, you better put that in the clip channel. I am making so many golden clips for you all, okay? I am making golden clips for all of you tonight. Um, so, um, anyway, so, you know, I feel like a lot of productive things have been done. And you can also look at, te at Tesla as, as being sort of many companies in one. Like our supercharging network is, if it were, if, if the Tesla supercharging network were its own company, it would be a Fortune 500 company by itself. Okay, the Tesla supercharging crap is such a gigantic fraud, okay? And I recognize that this is, um, that this is anecdotal. Um, it's only partially anecdotal, though, okay? The Tesla fucking supercharging network is such a load of crock, okay? Every single fucking last legs mall that you go to in America has a block of Tesla chargers, which will have two Teslas in them at fucking max at any time. And the Tesla chargers can't be used by any other car because they're proprietary. If this was such a grand endeavor, the Tesla supercharged network would let you charge any electric car, even if they ultimately wanted to advertise and promote their own thing, but they're not. They're proprietary chargers. So what that means is that every fucking place, even though the most common uh, electric car is, if I'm not mistaken, the Prius, the hybrid Prius is the most common electric car, not the Tesla. Hold on, let's double check. I'm pretty sure it's the Prius. Oh, it is the Tesla. Wait, is it? I guess it is the Tesla. All right. Well, it's the most common, but nonetheless, it's a very niche market and most people can't afford that. So there's a bunch of people who don't even have chargers for their other cars. And also, wait a second. And also, the, all of the other types of, of electrical car outnumber the Teslas in the end. Tesla chargers aren't proprietary anymore from what I've read. I have not seen that anywhere. I have not seen Tesla chargers that use the ones that any other car can use. If you go, if you're, if you're like driving in the middle of a, of, of fucking nowhere and you find a place that has electric car chargers, they'll fit your, 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 uh, your Nissan Leaf. They'll fit your, your Prius. They'll fit whatever, but not Tesla chargers. The other car companies have to pay royalties to Elon to be able to use the adapter. Yep. And so what you have is you have all these fucking dead end parking lots full of Tesla chargers that don't even get used and nobody else can even use them because they're proprietary. It's fucking, it's fucking bullshit. Just, just, just the supercharging system. Um, we also make the cells. We, we, we build the power electronics and the powertrain from scratch. Um, we have the most innovative. Uh, He's literally just doing an ad read for Tesla cars now. Uh, structural design. Which remember, he didn't invent. Elon Musk did not invent the Tesla. He didn't. He didn't invent any aspect of the Tesla. The largest castings ever used. Um, we have the, the best manufacturing technology at Tesla. Better manufacturing technology than companies that have been doing it for 100 years. So, so these, these demons of the mind, you know, are for the most part, uh, harnessed to productive ends. Um, okay, so let me ask but that doesn't that, that. mean that once in a while they, you know, uh, go wrong. <laughs> but, but, and this is a question I think a lot of people, you know, 
are always trying to figure out about not just you, but sometimes themselves. Meaning, what is driving all of this? You're doing all of these things. Do you think it's? It, do you think that you would be as successful, whatever success is, if it was? AD5 D2D Derek says with the five dollars. First of all, thank you very very much. But uh, Derek AD5 D2D. 85 D2D Derek says, I'm really ashamed, but a decade ago I admired him. It's almost incomprehensible now. He's such a piece of shit. I understand that some people were, were able to get into him back in the day when he mostly just did like pop science promo shit and then like talked about electric cars. But yeah, I don't I don't really like hold it against people. I would have disagreed with you at the time because I have I have been a I have been a not buy in the Elon Musk hype train. But I understand why some people were willing to be like, hey. But anyway, thank you. It wasn't being driven by some, I think that there's something you're trying to prove either to yourself or to somebody. I don't know. We're all trying to prove something. To Maybe prove I'm trying to, to prove it to my mother. I don't know. No, I, if I were to say, describe my, my philosophy, it is a philosophy of curiosity. Um, if, um, oh yeah. I, mean, I, I did have this existential crisis when I was uh, around 12 uh, about what's the meaning of life. Isn't it all pointless? Why not just commit suicide? Why exist? Um, I read the religious texts. Um, I read the philosophy books um, that, well, especially the German philosophy books, made me quite depressed, frankly. One should not read Schopenhauer and Nietzsche as a teenager. Um, But then I read uh, Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is a book. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Book on philosophy in the form of humor. And the point that uh, Adams was making there was that uh, we don't actually know what questions to ask. Um, that's why I said that, you know, the answer is 42. Like, basically, Earth's a giant computer, and, and it came up with the answer 42. But then to actually figure out what the question is, that's the actual hard part. Um, and I think this is generally true also in physics. At the point at which you can uh, properly frame the question, the answer is, is actually the easy part. Um, so... So, so my motivation then was that, well, my life is finite, really a flash in the pan in the, on a galactic t time scale. Uh, but if we can expand the scope and scale of consciousness, then we are better able to figure out what questions to ask about the answer that is the universe. Come on. Come on now. Come on now. No, no. I'm sorry, Spaghetti. Don't do Neil deGrasse Tyson dirty. Not even Neil deGrasse Tyson is this bad. Not even close. Neil deGrasse Tyson is like 18 levels higher uh, 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 above this guy. On the ability to talk about things profoundly. This is just dog water. This is just, oh man. And we, maybe we can find out the meaning of life or even what question to, what, what the right question to ask. This man, hogwash. That is what we just, you know, we just need to, we need to keep advancing the scientific technologically future of the future because that way we can discover the question for the answer, which with is the universe. Is, um, you know, wh where did we come from? Where are we going? Um, where are the <laughs> Advark says this is identical to a conversation I had smoking weed behind a dumpster at sixteen. <laughs> aliens? Are there aliens? Um, 
at, you know, these, these questions. We just need to keep asking the questions so that we can discover the correct question for the answer, which is, where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? You know, and is there new physics to discover? Uh, or is this, because there seems to be some real questions around dark matter and dark energy and... Um... What is he talking about? He's just saying words, dark matter, dark energy, seven states of matter, nuclear fission, relativity, gravity, string theory, Golgi body. So the, the purpose of SpaceX is to extend life beyond Earth on a sustained basis so that we can at least pass one of the Fermi great filters, uh, which is that of being a single planet civilization. Uh, if we are a single planet civilization, then we are simply waiting around for some extinction event, whether that is man-made or uh, natural. Um, but if you're a single planet civilization, eventually you will, uh, something will happen to that planet and you will die. If you're a multi-planet civilization, you will live m much longer. Also, a multi-planet civilization uh, is, the, that's the natural stepping stone to being. Yes, I do recognize that right now would be a perfect time for the dementia clock, but I'll be completely honest. I don't even think that it can, I don't even think the dementia clock would help here. This guy is so out of left, he's so out of it that like, it would just distract from his actual dementia on display. We've never had a moment. It, it wouldn't even parody him anymore. His own words and face are inducing dementia more than, than any, any dementia clock could prove. A multi-stellar civilization and being out there among the stars. So now this, I think, has two... This, this is not simply a defensive uh, motivation, um, but it is also one where that, you know, that gives meaning, man's search for meaning. Can I ask you a different... Um, but this is a, I, let me finish this philosophy point, even though it may seem rather esoteric. Um, it may resonate with a few people. Um, we must get past this Fermi filter of being a, a, this great filter of being a single planet civilization. Um, and if we do that, we are more likely to understand the nature of the universe and what questions to ask. Um, if you're a believer in the philosophy of curiosity, then then I think you should support this ambition. Um, and, but, but it's more, there's, being a multi-planet species is more than, than simply, you know, life, ins life insurance for life collectively. That's a defensive reason. But, but, I, but I think also that, that, that life has to be more than simply solving one sad problem after another. Uh, you know, th there, have to be, there have to be reasons where you wake up in the morning and you're happy to be alive. There have to be reasons that you, you have to say, why are you excited about the future? Bro. I mean, this is a tactic, you know, like um, someone points out that you, like pins you specifically on, um, on something that you did that's like unequivocally bad and so you ramble and run out the clock for as much as possible so that people fixate on all this, the incomprehensible stuff you said and not the fact that you got directly asked a question about why you were promoting a Hitler supporter on your main account on your website which is currently dying at, 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 and, you were, and he was asked that after going on a me megalomaniacal rant and telling the advertisers to go fuck themselves. Like his goose is cooked. His goose is giga cooked. Like, what gives you hope? And 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 if you if you if you aren't sure, ask your. Oh, that's a throwback. Polaire says he must be doing Kissinger's ask act crazy move. Yeah, the madman theory. He's in honor of, of in honor of Kissinger. He decided to do madman theory. Yep. Kids. And, and, and
Oh, oh, what? You're gonna call me a Nazi? What do you say to that? What do you say to that? How can I be a Nazi if I can do this, Juggles? And I think the idea of us being a space <laughs> civilization and being out there among the stars is incredibly inspiring. Um, the old, <laughs> the, the old turkey tactic. <laughs> Hit him with the meltdown. Hit him with the psych ward. And exciting and something to look forward to. And there need to be such things in the world. Let me ask you a different question about confidence. We were having a conversation here earlier about people um, and where, you're, where people get their confidence from. Some people have great insecurity. <laughs> Other people. Uh, <laughs> this is the what deciding to watch this was the greatest decision of tonight. I know, I know, people are people are going to be mad when I have to say that we're going to have if we either have to choose between holy mackerel or dark souls. But I don't care. This has been so much fun. I don't even care. Uh, have great confidence. And I was thinking about you because you have a very interesting history where people have told you over and over again that you're wrong. Well, sometimes they're right. Well, sometimes they are. But I would say that when it comes to Tesla, when it came to SpaceX, people told you that you were crazy. You were out of your mind. This was never going to happen. This was yes. never going to work. But, uh, and so, yes. what, No, actually, that's not um, what they said. Uh, there were specific junctures where that was the case. But keep in mind that SpaceX and Tesla um, were backed by a ton of money, and they very, very, very specifically hired uh, as many at the highest pay possible of the highest qualified engineers that you could find, that money could buy. Like, I remember when I was in college at one of the, um, one of the, at, at one of the, the, the best engineering schools in the country, a bunch of my friends and, uh, and uh, uh, dorm, uh, dorm mates were, we're, we're, we're getting like we're getting job offers and we're seeking work with Tesla and SpaceX because they paid so much and they were considered a prestigious position at the time. This is just a weird narrative. I want to see where he's going with this, though. I ask you this, yes. though. Yes. Oh, people did make fun of the Hyperloop, but that's because the Hyperloop was just a fucking terrible idea. And literally everyone can see that the Hyperloop is just fundamentally flawed. The Hyperloop is flawed on a basic level. It's like, um... The Hyperloop is like c trying to come up with a double-decker toilet idea where it's like you could build it, it's, engine it, it's technically possible, but it fails for other reasons because you don't want a fucking toilet that leaks down on top of another person below and nobody wants to poop on top of each other. As it turns out, um, the Hyperloop, like, okay, let me give an example of this to be specific with the Hyperloop. The problem with Hyperloop is that on a fundamental conceptual level, it fails. And the reason why it fails is Hyperloop has to be built really deep under the ground so that it doesn't conflict with, um, with the, um, the infrastructure, like sewage, power, etc., basements, whatever, of the city that you're building it in. So it has to go really, really deep, deeper than basically anything else. Be, uh, and that's great uh, uh, if you want to build a high-speed tunnel. But because it has to be deep, you have to get a car all the way down that deep, which means you need to have an elevator. And an elevator is limited in how fast it can move because humans can only tolerate uh, so much G-forces and also because elevators take space. So even if you can build a tube that can fire people at rapid speeds from one side of the city to the other, you have a bottleneck at the fact that it has to be built deep underground and that people have to queue up for an elevator that will move slowly. So even if you can make a tube that fires you really fast, you spend all your time waiting at the elevator to get in and out. And then you also have bottlenecks in the exit and entry points of the tunnel. So it fails conceptually. It's not, it's not, it's not that the tech, that the engineering on the, on like that you can't build a tube that's fast enough. It's that the, the setup of it fails on other levels, just completely doesn't work for what you want it to do. It doesn't solve the traffic problem. It creates a traffic bottleneck while everyone's waiting to get into an elevator.
And also keep in mind that he was so devoted to the idea of the Hyperloop that he built and it, he, he dumped a ton of money into a company that was just designed to tunnel shit. The Boring Company, as he calls it. Anyway, let's go. Now, when people say <coughs> you're wrong, this isn't right. Do you look at that and say, you know what, that's like a red flag for me because, you know, I, I've been told no. so often that I'm wrong that I know that I, and I know I'm right because I've had that experience. Or are there people in your life when they say, you know what, Elon, this is not, this is not right. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, I think what you're sort of trying to say is that, uh, do I at this point think because uh, I've been right so many times when others have said I'm wrong, that now I have to believe I'm right when in fact I'm wrong. You did very well. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Damn, I like this interviewer. This interviewer has talent. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about Andrew Ross Sorkin, but this guy has a, is a talented interviewer, no matter what else. I don't know anything else about him. He could be a total, he could be a total jerk. He could be whatever, but he's a damn good interviewer. That was a fucking get. What do you think? No, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Here's the thing. Um, physics is un unforgiving. Physics is unforgiving. So, uh, I mean, I have, you know, these various little sayings that I've come up with uh, that uh, physics is the law and everything else is a recommendation. Right. Did, did he come up with that? Did, did he come up with that saying? Uh, in the sense that uh, you can break any law made by humans, but try breaking a law made by physics. That's much more difficult. Um, so if you are wrong and persist in being wrong, the rockets will blow up and the cars will fail. Um, so nobody tell him, nobody tell him about Nobody tell them about all of the Tesla failures. Have you guys seen that viral video going around of the uh, the guy doing the test run in the Tesla and in and in a single uninterrupted drive, it almost crashes four times in addition to blasting through a stop sign? Oh, he did say it on Twitter. And yeah, his rockets blew up many times. And again, they're not his rockets. He didn't fucking invent the rockets. He doesn't draw things up on the rockets. He hired engineers to do it. He hired engineers. Other people invented those rockets. Oh God, I, I, I'm, I, we gotta continue. So this is, we're not, we're not trying to figure out what, what flavor of ice cream uh, is the best flavor of ice cream. The, right. Like if, if there's a thousand things that can happen on a rocket flight, and only one of them gets the rocket to orbit. And so being wrong results in failure uh, when dealing with physical uh, objects. So, but that's the interesting part. So now you've built this, th these great companies that physically, the physics of them are enormously su successful, so successful, arguably, that you have leverage over everybody else, right? There's, nobody else can do Starlink. Nobody else can get, I, 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 nobody else. Well, nobody else can do Starlink because there's so many fucking Starlinks cluttering space that if you try to do Starlink, they'll all crash into each other and cause a fucking, uh, what's, that, what's that event from gravity? The thing that happens in gravity. What's it called? Kessler syndrome, the Kessler syndrome ca catastrophe. Where it's like one crash triggers everything else to detonate, which starts breaking everything. And so you just have a giant mess that's breaking anything that's orbiting whatsoever until it all clears. <laughs> the shit cascade. Yeah. <laughs> can get the, the rockets in, in space yet. Amazon and Jeff Bezos are trying, but they haven't yet. I hope he does. You hope he does. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think you know. Uh, but I, I actually agree with 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 a lot of Jeff's motivations. Um, I, I mean, I think you know he's, you know, and I don't, so 
I'm, let, me put, let me put it this way. If there, if, if there was a button I could press that would delete uh, Blue Origin, I wouldn't press it. Um, so I think uh, it's good that he's spending money on, on um, making rockets too. Um, you know, I suggest perhaps he spend more time on it, but uh, you know, it's up to him. Uh, the, the, uh, but but, but you know, I should make a point here. Killjoy says Kessler syndrome is so dangerous because it would result in a debris cloud that would destroy our ability to function anything outside of our own atmosphere. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how um, like how likely or probable the Kessler syndrome thing is, but as I understand it, it's like a real concept, right? Maybe I'm wrong. Oh no, it really is. The Kessler syndrome was proposed by NASA scientist Donald J. Kessler in 1978. It's a scenario in which the density of objects in low Earth orbit, um, hold on, let me, I was reading this. Um, uh, the density of objects in low Earth orbit due to space pollution is numerous enough that collisions between objects could potentially cause a cascade in which each collision generates further space debris that increases the likelihood of, of further collisions. It just keeps going up. The line just keeps going up. Damn, there's actually a lot of info on this. This is a huge article. All right, let's continue. I don't want to get lost on this. So nothing, nothing any of my companies have done has been to stifle competition. In fact, we've done the opposite. So at Tesla, we have open sourced our patent. Anonymous Platypus says it's been properly studied and modeled and it's, mo and it's gonna happen eventually. Oh, I don't know. I can't, I don't know enough about that. I'm not a, I'm not a space, I'm not a, I'm not a space wizard like Elon Musk. So, you know, what do you know that he doesn't? He, you know, the only real law is physics and he's already broken that. So what laws are left? Really, he's just like Holy Mac. There's nothing left, no challenge left. Anyone can use our patents for free. How many companies do you know who've done that? Can you name one? I can't. Um, at SpaceX, we don't use patents. So I mean, said once in a while we'll, we'll file a patent just so some patent troll doesn't Wait. cause trouble. Wait, we don't use patents except for when we do. I think this, I think this is a load of crock. This is just a lie, isn't it? Isn't this just like a flat out, like just no, no questions asked lie? Total BS? Yeah, I think this is like a total lie. But we're not stopping any, we've done, we've done nothing anti-competitive. He's not allowed to patent certain products because they're part of a government program. Huh, interesting. We've done nothing to stop I, our I'm not. We've been going for quite a while. Have you liked the stream and pressed subscribe if you're watching on the video later? If not, why not? You know you want to hear the signal. Anyway, this is a viewer-supported show, so please show some love. Uh, consider donating or joining the Patreon, which is linked down below. If you don't want to donate on my website or through YouTube, the Patreon is a great way to support me. And I would really appreciate it because this is a viewer-supported show. We've been having a lot of fun. And also, look, look, Acrid... Acrid will not spray you with poison if you join the Patreon. Anyway, let's continue. Just you at all? No, I, I, I just want to clarify for the audience because some companies have done, done anti-competitive things. I, I, I think the, the strange thing or the unusual thing about SpaceX and Tesla is that we've done things that have helped our competition. So at Tesla... We Doctors hate this one... Doctors hate this one easy trick to make your cock longer. Click like on Demon Mama's stream right now. We um, have made our supercharger system open access. We, we've, we've, we, we've made our charger technology available for free to the other manufacturers. You get the girth from subscribing, Nerodia. You have to do both. You have to, if you, if you like it, and then you get a little pencil dick, and then you press subscribe, and it buffs up and gets all veiny and strong. The, the reason I... No wall of garden. We could have put a wall up. But, but reason, instead, we invited them in. The reason I mention this, though, is because you've had the success in the physical physics world, 
you now have these very uh, difficult decisions that have huge impacts on the world that are not physical decisions at all. They're, they're decisions of the mind. They're decisions that you and others... Vine says, what if I don't want the link? Well, then you have to do the like and Patreon subscription combination. If you do those, then you won't get the link. You'll just get whatever you want. You just have to make, and there's a question whether you should be making these decisions at all. And I, I think about it in the context of Starlink. Uh, obviously, there was the uh, report about uh, how it's being used in Ukraine and, and the Russia war. There's questions about what, you know, Taiwan, whether Taiwan uh, should use it or will use it. Uh, I believe they're not right now because they're worried that... Uh, at some point, maybe the Chinese will tell you that you have to, uh, they have leverage over you and you're going to have to turn that off, right? I mean, these are, these are very difficult decisions. And I'm so curious how you think about that. And not just the decisions, the fact that you have that power. Isn't it strange that the richest man is getting a free therapy session live in front of the world? Um, it kind of is, but it's not really a therapy session. And that's what's kind of genius about this. This is the type of interview that can be referenced in the future and he said a lot of things here he said a lot of deranged things um and uh i'm not gonna lie this kind of reminds me of uh, a lot of other uh interviews that have preceded great disaster for uh for tech uh for tech hucksters i think of um of theranos um elizabeth holmes some of her later interviews where people got her on the record being completely deranged you know the therapy session ones are um, actually the types where if he was just complimenting him the whole time, that would be one thing. But he's not. He's getting him to 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 he's getting him to open his uh, to to open up and talk at length about all kinds of things and just vent. And it's like he like Elon Elon Musk doesn't seem to be aware of uh, of all of the dynamics going on, or more realistically, he doesn't care. So, yeah. I, I just, I think it's important for the audience to understand that the reason I have these powers is not because of some anti-competitive actions, it's simply because we've executed very well. Oh, I'm not dismissing that. I think yeah. there are so many people, by the way, who are huge like, supporters of what you've created. There are created. other satellites out there, you know. But, not, but, they're, and, but they're not as good as yours. And, the same, and we can say that maybe make the same argument on the cars and everything else. Yeah. But as a result, that gives you enormous leverage. Right. Okay. I mean, with the exception of the, by the way, these advertisers who aren't on X. In every other instance, everybody needs you. Well, I mean, nobody's. I mean, they use our product if it's better. They use somebody else's product if it's their other product better. And I accept that. And maybe one day somebody I mean, like, else will create I mean, a better product. Is but it like, you know, how, how is it a bad thing to make better products than other companies? Well, and I, I want to just go back to this to the Starlink piece of it, though, because it, that has sort of a geo, geopolitical ramification in terms okay. of your power and how you think about that specific power. And then uh, the power that the U.S. government might have either over you or not over you, the power the Chinese government might have over you or not over you and how those things get used. What, I mean, what are you suggesting? I'm, I'm, I'm asking the question around this, this very idea of how these satellites are going to be used, whether you think that you should have control of them, whether the government should have. Killjoy 40 k says, imagine a future where two sides of a war use Starlink and he can just shut off Starlink for the highest bidder. Um, that sounds like the plot to a Metal Gear Solid uh, uh, plot line. But the reality is um, he, he's not ready for that world. Um, because the, the, the truth of the matter is, um, he's a weenie dweeb Reddit billionaire who has made a lot of money, uh, by, uh, fucking around with technology and gambling on certain technology. But the moment that he talks into, um, remember earlier, do you guys remember earlier when, um, we were learning about Henry Kissinger and how Henry Kissinger looked the other way, uh, so that Pinochet could do a car bombing in DC and they succeeded? That, uh, that the head of state blew up his own finance minister on the streets of D.C. with a car bomb because of um, ge a geopolitical conflict. And that was Chile, okay? I want you to think what would happen if he tried to intervene in a more significant conflict. Um, things get serious really fucking quick. And I don't think he's ready for that. I don't think he is... I, I think this is one of the things... Like, this interview right here is kind of proving that his brain is completely and utterly cooked and that the moment that he steps out of his lane, 
uh, it will it will it will be it will be so over faster than you could possibly imagine for him. Also, if he pissed off the right power, they could just seize his shit and be successful with it, or shoot them out of the sky. Control of them. Uh, you how trust the government? Well, that's uh, there's a lot of people who don't trust the government. Nah, exactly. But then this go I mean, think of think of uh, think of how much shit he's found himself in since the decision with Ukraine. And that was making a decision that was I mean, he didn't even get to do much. He basically fucked around and flipped a couple of switches. That's about it. My goodness, Nat with the six dollars and sixty six cents. Oh, my God. This is Nat's first super chat ever. What? Thank you. That means so much. Lately, we have been getting so many people who've been willing to give their first super chat ever, and Nat just did that. Nat, seriously, that means the world to me. That feels so good. Like, seriously, it feels awesome. I feel honored. Thank you. Thank you for supporting my show. Seriously. Ooh, ooh, we got a ooh, we got somebody angry in the YouTube chat. Who is to blame for a generation of adults with nothing to offer the world but anxieties, disorder, and an utter dependency on cell phones? That makes sense to somebody. Group weakness. Little self-serving communities with names like Demon Mama. That is political act. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I find that fi kind of funny, given that the most fragile generation of all time is the fucking boomers, and they're also all cell phone addicted. The boomers cannot tear themselves away from their fucking iPhone, where they're listening to uh, Tucker Carlson's uh, Twitter show, uh, screaming about how their grandchildren are going to get turned into gay hippie transes in the university. So I don't know. I'll take my chances with the. Uh, I'll take my chances with the um, cell phone. Um, cell phone addicted Zoomers over the like actual piles of like quivering alcoholism and cancer that are the boomers. All usernames are stupid, says Eugene Government Audits. Man, this guy sounds like he's trouble. If you lend credence to usernames, God help you. What are you talking about? Oh man, this is getting wild. Bragg wins with the $2 says, I wish I had champagne for this special occasion. I wish you did too. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. No, we'll see. We'll see. Let's, let's, let's see how this, uh, listen, let the cow moo a little bit. All right. Let the cow moo. It goes back to the trust of you, right? I mean, like I said, we're not the only company who has communication satellites. Their satellites are just much better than theirs. So it's not like we have a monopoly. Right. Do you, feel, have do you feel like anybody has product? It's not like do you feel anybody has leverage over you? I mean, I think at the end of the day, uh -oh. if we make bad products that people don't want to use, then like Twitter, which you were just telling people to go fuck themselves, the users will vote with their resources and use something else. Let me pivot the conversation for a second. I mean, um, certainly, I mean, my companies are overseen by regulators. And, and while, um, you know, once, it's, it's since uh, SpaceX, Starlink, Tesla um, are overseen by, you know, cumulatively over 100 regulators. You, Eugene Government Audits, you are. You're on here. You're on your phone watching a show right now that everybody is enjoying and, and, and socially engaging in, and you're sitting in here going, <laughs> phone, phone bad, phone bad on your phone while everyone else is just living their normal life and having fun laughing at this dumb idiot and talking to one another. You're the problem. You're the problem, actually. It's really funny. Brutus Magnuson with the incredibly generous $10 super chat. I believe a lot of these celebrities have similar mental health issues with their egos that I had. They're more miserable than you can imagine if that's the case. I've had two breakdowns like this one. 
Um, maybe, but also this guy is a multi-billionaire with un unimaginable power. Um, and, um, yeah. I notice I said not unlimited power, but unimaginable. No one here really knows. No one in this chat. No one. I, unless, unless there's a billionaire in chat. If there's a billionaire in chat, please, if there's a billionaire in chat, please consider a cash injection to this wonderful show that you're enjoying. But otherwise, none of us can really imagine what it would be like to have billions of dollars and multiple companies at your fingertips. And this guy cannot even take a breath for a second. It's not with Elon Musk. This is not this is not just a mental health issue. He's not just dealing with a mental health issue. He doesn't just have trauma. This is a guy who's um suffering from his own his own existence. The fact that he that people like him are allowed to exist, that billionaires can exist, that you can sit on top of that is in and of itself a tortured existence. So yeah, he might be miserable, but he's miserable at the expense of countless others sitting on a hoard of wealth that he uses to fuck around and fuck other people over. But yeah. Are we experiencing a mad Elon fan? It's possible. Uh, and, and actually more than that, a few hundred regulators, because uh, you've got, we're in 55 countries. Um, if, if you sum up all the times that I had an argument with regulators of hundreds of regulators over decades, it, it can sound really terrible, except but they forgot to mention that there were 10 million regulations we complied with and only five that I disagreed with. Oh, that's an argument. I followed all the laws except for the one that said don't stick your dick in the ice cream stand. And everybody loses their minds. <laughs> you drunk drive a hot air balloon into the side of a hotel one time and everybody fucking loses it. <laughs> but they list all five, the five. And it sounds like, wow, this guy's a real maverick. I'm like, yeah, but what about the 10 million we complied with? Do you, let me, let me one, one related thing on this, and the, the, the leverage of countries and things over you, and regulators. Um, X is this fr free speech platform. You do business in China. Lots of business in China. That's an important part of your, your business, I imagine. Uh, well, not SpaceX. How do you think about the leverage that the Chinese have over you? And do they have leverage over you? And how do you feel about, some people would say, is it hypocritical uh, for you to be doing business in China, or frankly, in other countries as it relates to X and other things, that don't follow this free speech path that uh, you have espoused? It seems that Eugene government audits has fled. The best that the X platform can do is adhere to the laws of any given country. Uh, do you think there's something more we could do than that? I think it would be very hard, but I just wonder, given it, the sort of strong... He was just talking about, you can break all the laws of humanity, but you can't break the laws of physics. And now he's like, we, we, actually, we can't break any of the laws of humanity, even if we morally disagree with it, because I have to make lots of money. This guy is so inconsistent, incredible, absolutely incredible. Philosophical approach that you've, 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 you've been vocal about, whether you say to yourself, you know, maybe I shouldn't be doing business in that country. Uh, well, first of all, Starlink and SpaceX do are no business in China whatsoever. Um, uh, Tesla has one of uh, four factories, four vehicle factories in China. Um, and China is, you know, I don't know, a quarter of our market or something like that. Uh, and so it's a quarter of the market of one company. Um, the same is true, by the way, of, of all the other car companies. Uh, they also have something on that order of a quarter of their sales in, in China. Um, so if, you, if that's a problem for Tesla, it's a problem for every car company. Um, I mean, I think one has to be careful about not conflating uh, the various companies because I can only... 1852 to Derek, I just got your clip. <laughs> ...do things that are within the bounds of the law. I cannot do beyond that. Um, my aspiration is to do as much good as possible and to be as productive as possible within the bounds of what is legal. More than that, I cannot do. Um, I want to pivot and talk about AI for a moment. We had Jensen Wong here 
who's a big fan of yours, as you know. Yeah, Jensen's awesome. Talk about, talk I mean, about bringing you the first box, by the way, yes. uh, with Ilya, uh, interestingly enough. Yes. Uh, uh, back in 2016, I think. There's a video of Jensen uh, and me unpacking the first AI computer at OpenAI. Uh, so I'm so curious what you think of what's just happened over the past two weeks. While you were dealing with this other uh, um, headline, series of headlines, there I was mean, a whole other series of headlines open AI, so far, at OpenAI. What did you think? Well, uh, you founded it, co-founded it. Co-founded it, yeah. Um, well, well the, the whole arc of OpenAI, frankly, is a little troubling because the, the, the reason for starting OpenAI was to create a, counter, a counterweight to uh, Google, Google and DeepMind, which at the time had two-thirds of all AI talent and basically infinite money and compute, and there was no, there was no counterweight. It was u unipolar world. And Larry and Paige and I used to be very close friends, and I would stay at his house, and I would talk to Larry into the late hours of the night about AI safety. Um, and it became apparent to me that Larry did not care about AI safety. Um, I think perhaps the thing that gave it away was when he called me a speciest uh, for being pro-humanity. Um, as in, you know, like a racist, right. but for... This is, this is the most soy thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I have never heard anything more soy in my entire goddamn life. He called me, he called me a speciesist because I didn't like his AI idea. <sighs> the Google guy. I can imagine them both sitting there, like, fucking sitting on, uh, on, on chairs made out of money and going, you're a speciesist, you're a speciesist. And the other one was, well, well, you just don't, you don't care about the future of AI. Well, I want to go to Mars. I'm going to go to Mars. You're a speciesist. Species. Um, so I'm like, wait a second. Uh, what side are you on, Larry? Um, and, and then I'm like, okay, listen, this guy's calling me a speciesist. He doesn't care. Oh, yak daddy, it's so wild. About AI safety, um, we've got to have some counterpoint here because this seems like we could be, this is, this, this is no good. So OpenAI was actually started, and it was meant to be open source. Uh, I named it uh, OpenAI uh, after open source. Um, it is, in fact, closed source. Super clo it, should be, it should be renamed Super Closed Source for Maximum Profit AI. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> this is what it actually is. <laughs> I mean, Faye loves irony. I mean, in fact, a friend of mine has this, says, like, the way to predict outcomes is the most ironic outcome is the most, it, it's like this Occam's razor, like the simplest mm -hmm. sort of explanation is most likely. And uh, my friend Jonah's view is that the most ironic outcome is the most likely. And that's what's happened with OpenAI. Um, it's, it's gone from an open source uh, foundation a 5-1-2-3, two, to suddenly it's like a $90 billion for-profit corporation with closed source. So I don't know how you go from here to there, but that seems like a, I don't know how you get, I don't know, if, is this legal? <laughs> I'm so, like, this legal? So, but, but, so as you saw Sam Altman get ousted yeah. by somebody you know, Ilya, and Ilya was somebody, was a friend of yours. Yes. You brought him there. Uh, you I was just I was just looking into OpenAI, and he left OpenAI because he wanted to do more AI under Tesla. He's trying to make himself out that he took like a principled stance, but the reason he left OpenAI was because he he had a a, a conflict of interest because he was having Tesla develop driving AI. Relationship with Larry Page effectively broke down over you recruiting him away. That's, I think that's correct. That was the fight. That was the. Larry refused to be friends with me after I recruited Ilya. And so here's Ilya apparently saying something is very wrong. I think we should be concerned about this because I think Ilya actually has a strong moral compass. Um, he thinks about, he, you know, he, he really sweats. Yeah, he, I'm looking at the, I was just looking at the article and it says that he tried to do a takeover 
at OpenAI because he didn't like what other people were doing. So like all this bullshit about him trying to make it open source is, is just complete crap. It's just complete bullshit again. So over questions of what is right. Oh, this will be VODed. All of my videos are VODs. They always automatically become VODs. Don't worry. Um, and if Ilya felt strongly enough to want to, you know, fire Sam, well, what the I think fuck? the world should know what was that reason. Have you talked to him? I've reached out, but he, he doesn't want to talk to anyone. Have you talked to other people behind the scenes? Is this all happening? I've talked to a lot of people. As nobody, I've not found anyone who knows why. Have, have you? I think we are all still trying to find out. I, I mean, look, one of two things is, is either it was a serious thing and we should know what it is, or it was not a serious thing and, and then the board should resign. What do you think of Sam Altman? I have mixed feelings about Sam. I, I do, um, you know, the, the ring of power, you know, can corrupt. Um. Okay. I was going to sleepy. And this is the ring of power. So, you know, I don't know. I think I want to know why Ilya felt so strongly as to fire Sam. This sounds like a serious thing. I, d I don't think it was trivial. And I'm quite concerned that this that there's some you know, dangerous element of AI that they've, they've created. discovered. Yes. You think they've discovered something? That would be my guess. No, I don't believe it. I, don't, I, I think it's a big fat fucking dud and they're all fighting over money. That's it. I don't think there's any secret dark. I don't think, I don't think they created the Roko's Basilisk in the basement of some shitty company that's a, a, a big fucking venture capitalism scheme. Nope, don't buy it. Joke's on me. Tomorrow, the open AI uh, uh, Terminator is going to teleport through my door and kill me for dissing Elon Musk. But if that's true, why isn't it doing it now, hmm? If they created AI, then the AI should be smart enough to create time travel and should have been able to kill me before I made fun of, uh, ruthlessly made fun of Elon Musk while people gave me donations. Hmm? Hmm? What say you? Where are you with your own AI efforts relative to where you think OpenAI is, where you think Google is, where you well, think the others are? I mean, on the AI front, I'm in somewhat of a quandary here because um, I've thought AI could be something that would change the world in, in a significant way since I was in college, I mean, like 30 years ago. Um, but the reason I didn't go build AI right from the get-go was because I, I was uncertain about which, which edge of the double-edged sword was, would be sharper. The good Killjoy says, literally the only thing they discovered is that they made some fancy widgets and they have not actually been able to advance AI towards anything that could be considered sentient or sapient. Yeah, that's always going to be the discovery and then the money dries up and that's what's really happening. The discovery is that, oh shit, our product is a dud. We made, a, uh, we made an, an inferior version of already existing predictive models, uh, which already suck. Edge of the bad edge. So I held off on doing anything on AI. I could have created I think the leading AI company, kind of open AI, actually kind of is that. Um, I love you. Because I was just uncertain if you make this magic genie, what will happen? Um, you know, whereas I think... He, he, saw, he, saw open, he saw Oppenheimer this year, and he was like, that's just like me, man, but with AI instead of a nuke. And sustainable energy technology is much more of a single-edged sword that is single-edged good, making life multi-planet. What the hell?
Danny Altman's abuse allegations against OpenAI's now-fired CEO Sam Altman highlight the need to prioritize humanity over tech. Serious allegations of abuse have been made against or made against OpenAI's newly fired CEO Sam Altman by his sister Annie Altman gained renewed attention on social media in October 2023 and highlighted which sorts of stories receive widespread press coverage. America has gotten into the bad habit of lionizing tech geniuses based on limited information and the clickability of promoting game changers and disruptors. If someone, correction, if generally a white cis man presents himself with enough confidence, then venture capitalists, media, and the public tend to believe he's as smart and as innovative as he says without caring too much about evidence, track record, or personal history. And there's a hesitation to rock that boat. Okay, so where's this? What are Annie Altman's allegations against her brother? Annie Altman alleged in a November 2021 Twitter thread, so the allegations are from two years ago, that she experienced sexual, physical, emotional, verbal, and financial abuse from, from biological siblings, mostly Sam Altman and some from Jack Altman. She returned to those allegations again in 2023, trying to call out Sam. I'm not four years old with a 13-year-old brother climbing into my bed non-consensually anymore. Jesus fucking Christ. What? Whale writes in the profile, Sam Altman is the Oppenheimer's age. What did I just say? They saw the movie Oppenheimer and they were like, that's totally me. Okay, that's incredibly fucked. I feel strongly that others have also been abused by these perpetrators. I'm seeking people to join me in pursuing legal justice, safety for others in the future, and group healing. Please message me with any information. You can remain however anonymous you feel safe. Huh. That is fascinating. And horrifying. Let's continue. Sorry, I think single-edged good. Um, you know, Starlink, mostly single-edged good. I mean, giving people better connectivity to people that, you know, don't, don't have connectivity or too expensive, I think is... Yes, yes. Uh, Kildre says, it, it, basically all these tech guys are literally just trying to launder money as long as possible and they use sci-fi conspiracy brain to trick people into thinking AI is a magic snake oil. Yeah, that's been, that's, that's been the story of the tech industry for like 10 years now. Very, you know, a, a very much a good thing. Um, Sonic w was instrumental, by the way, in halting the Russian advance. Uh, and the Ukrainians said so. Good night, um, brother Nate. So, you know, I think there's, but with AI, you, you've got the magic genie problem. Um, you may think you want a magic genie, but, that, but once you, that genie's out of the bottle, it's hard to say what happens. How now, far are we away from that genie being out of the bottle, you think? We think it's already out. I mean, the genie is certainly poking its head out. Um, the AGI, the idea of artificial general intelligence, given what you now are working on yourself and you know how easy or hard it is to train, to create the inferences, to create the weights. I hope I'm not getting too far in the weeds of just how this works, but those are the basics behind the software end of this. It's funny, you know, all these weights. Uh, did he just say that AI is turtling? He literally did, didn't he? <laughs> just basically numbers in a comma-separated value file. He's prairie-dogging it! And that's our digital god, a CSV file. Not that funny. Um, Uh, but that's kind of literally what it is. So I, I think it's coming pretty fast, you know. Is that, I mean, uh, you, you've, you've, you famously have admitted to overstating how quickly things will happen, but how quickly do you think this will happen? I 
If you say smarter than the smartest human at anything, yep, it may not be then quite smarter than all humans, all machine augmented humans, you know, because we keep people got computers and stuff. Um, it's a higher bar. But if you say smarter than any, you know, can write as good a novel as say J.K. Rowling or discover new. Well, that's not a very high bar. Physics or invent new technology. Um, I would say that we are less than three years from that point. Oh yeah, totally, dude. Oh man, I I can't wait. I can't wait three years from now. I can't wait for us to see where the fucking Chat GPT is. I can't wait to see that fucking bullshit ass fucking writing. Maybe you're right. Maybe it will be able to outdo J.K. Rowling, but uh. Um, let me ask you a question about uh, XAI and what you're doing. And uh, because there's an interesting thing that's different, I think, about what you have relative to some of the others, which is you have data, you have information, you have all of the stuff that everybody in here... You have buzzword. You have buzzword too. ...has put on the platform to sort through. Um, and I don't know if everybody realized that initially. What is the value of that? Yeah, I mean, data is very important. Um, you could say d data is probably more valuable than gold. Um. Meaningless statement. I just produced data right now. Ready? I'm going to produce some fucking data. Ready? Oh, shit. It didn't work. I failed. Wait, I'd still produce the data. Oh my god. Bazinga. Oh my god. B buzzing, buzzing. That's my wife you're talking about. Bazinga. That's, that, that's my wife you're talking about. I am a. I am a. I am a. I have produced so much gold. I am rich now. The data produced in the last five seconds. Uh, is is worth your arm and your leg. As it turns out, uh, actually, no data in the abstract is not worth more than gold. That's fucking absolutely goddamn stupid as can be. It is the dumbest thing I've heard all night. Uh, data, there is oh, data is valuable only uh, in very specific contexts. That, like I said, everything I just produced was all just a massive, massive surge of data, and it's not worth anything. Well, actually, it might be worth more than you think if you decide to donate right now. If you donate right now, and you donate because of that little bit of data that I just produced, it might actually be worth more than gold. But then maybe you have actually, maybe you have more, maybe you have the gold in X in a different way. In a way, again, that I, I, that I don't know if the public appreciates what that means. Yes, um, X is the, might be the single best source of data. All right, everybody. This is your call. We need to prove Elon Musk right. I want everyone to go right now onto, onto X.com and post the most valuable data you can possibly imagine. A, a, a deep fried image of Goatsy. We will prove him right that X is the greatest trove of data that has ever been created. Boon of Tyrants with the five dollars, sweet munitions of knowledge come unto me, indeed! Look! And feast upon it! I created data worth money! Um, I mean, it is, uh, there are more, you know, people, links that go to, people click on more links to X than anything else on Earth. People asking me and not knowing what Goatsy is, it's time, everybody. This is how you know it's time. Sometimes people think Facebook or Instagram is a bigger thing, but actually there are more links to X than anything. You can, there's public information. Hey, Gayfesh, good to see you. Welcome. It's been a wild night. You can Google it. Okay, let me ask you a... Um, um, listen, in order to be able to understand Goatsy, you'll also need to look up Lemon Party. And meat spin. And once you've looked up all three of those, you'll understand all of them. So it, it is, it is uh, 
where you would find what is happening right now on Earth at any given point in time. The oh, yeah, yeah, don't forget Tub Girl. The whole open AI drama played out, in fact, on the X platform. Um, so it is one of the, it's not, they're, they're, you know, Google certainly has a massive amount of data, so does Microsoft. Um, so it's not like, but, but it is one of the best sources of data. Um, can I ask you an interesting uh, IP issue, which I think is actually something uh, I can say as somebody who's in the creator business and journalistic business and, and whatnot, uh, where I care about copyright. So one of the things about training on data has been this idea that you're not going to train or, or that these things are not being trained on people's copyrighted information. Historically, that's been the concept. Yeah, that's a huge lie. Say that again? Yes, well, these, AI, well, these AIs are all trained on copyrighted data, obviously. So you think it's a lie when, when OpenAI says that this is not, n none of these guys say they're training on... Yes, it's an absolute unbelievable lie, obviously. It, I, I can't believe it, but I'm actually agreeing with, I'm actually going to agree with Elon Musk here. He's just telling the truth for once. The only true thing he said all night is that AI absolutely, obviously, blatantly, it is incredibly obvious. The entire project from bottom to top is absolutely being trained on copyrighted information. Of course it is. That's insane. We've already, we've even seen evidence of it with the art AIs. They regularly do that. The fact that you can go to an art AI and you can type in a specific artist and ask it to be done in that style means it's absolutely learning and growing off of copyrighted material. Of course. Yeah. Copyrighted data. Oh, that's, that's a lie. It's a lie, yeah, straight up. It's a straight up lie. Okay. 100%. So Obviously, it's been trained on appropriated data. Okay, so let me ask you a second <laughs> question, which is all of the people who have been uploading. I mean, it's like a one every minute here. All of the people who have been uploading articles, the best quotes from different articles, uh, videos, 2X, all of that can be trained on. And it's interesting because people put all of that there. Um, and those quotes have historically been considered fair use, right? They, yeah. People are putting those quotes up there. And individually, on a fair use basis, you'd say, okay, that makes sense. But now there are people who do threads. And by the way, there may be multiple people who've done, you know, an article that has a thousand words. Technically, all thousand words could have made it onto X somehow. And effectively, now you have this remarkable repository. And I wonder what you, how you think about that again, and how you think. You also have, you also have a endless stream of people saying poop, cock, fart, butt, posting pictures of their own asshole, uh, people posting pictures of Goatsy, uh, uh, people saying uh, uh, ivermectin fucking ass conspiracy theories. It's... It, Yes, it is true that there's a bunch of data on on uh, on X, but I don't know actually how useful the format of X is for training an AI. Maybe it is. I'm not an AI expert, but uh, I'm a little skeptical is what I'm saying. I'm a little skeptical on how useful and easy this data is to parse and contextualize. Um, remember that Microsoft AI that they let onto Twitter and then it started saying the N-word over and over and over again and then they shut it down and never rebooted the project? Do you guys remember that? I remember that. The creative community and those who were the original IP owners should think about that. I don't know, except to say that the, by the time these laws... Yeah, MST. Yes, exactly, MST. ...suits have decided we'll have digital God, so... Ask, ask digital god at that point um these little <laughs> brutus magnuson said it's just two hard working hands pulling open a butt true this <laughs> won't be decided before on a time frame that is relevant um but is that a good thing or a bad thing i think we live you know there's that i don't know if it's actually a real chinese saying or not but uh May you live an interesting time, right. which is apparently uh, not a good thing. Uh, I thought that was—I thought that was supposed to be an Irish saying. Um, but uh, I, mean, I, I would prefer to personally. I would prefer to live in interesting times, um, and and we live in the most interesting of times. I think. And for, for a while there, I was like, really. He's literally hitting us. He is. He is literally hitting us with "We live in a society." getting demotivated and losing sleep over the sort of the threat of AI danger 
And then I finally sort of became fatalistic about it and said, well, even if I knew it was annihilation was certain, uh, would I choose to be alive at that time or not? And I said, I probably would have choose to be alive at that time because it's the most interesting thing. Thanks, dude. Uh, even if my product would create global annihilation, I would still do it anyway because it would be cool to see. That's the translation from from his mumbling uh, uh, egotistical bullshit. That's what he just said. Yeah, I would totally blow up the whole planet for everyone because it would be cool. I should be allowed to sit on a billion, billions and billions of dollars. It is definitely a healthy thing for a single dumbass to be able to accumulate more wealth than a, than a fucking king. Um, even if there's nothing I could do about it. So then, you know, then basically a, sort of a fatalistic resignation helped me sleep at night because I was having trouble sleeping at night because of AI danger. Uh, oh, come on. Um, now, what to do about it? Yeah, it definitely, it definitely wasn't the, uh, the, the insane amounts of coke you were snorting. It was definitely the AI danger that was keeping you up at night. I mean, I've been the biggest, the, the one banging the drum the hardest, by far the longest, uh, or at least one of the longest uh, for AI danger. And, and these regulatory things that are happening, the single biggest reason they're happening is because of me. Um, Do you think they're ever going to get their arms around it? We, we talked to the vice president this afternoon. Everything good is because of Elon Musk, and everything bad is because of anybody who doesn't like Elon Musk. Literal toddler rant. And she said she wants to regulate it. People have been trying to regulate social media for years and have done nothing effectively. Well, there's, there's regulation around anything which is a like a, a physical danger to, or a danger to the public. Also, so, like, this is the guy who's super, this is the guy who, yeah, exactly, he got him dead to rights. This is the fucking idiot. Elon Musk is the guy who's whined about government regulation on social media. He's been like, oh, they're trying to steal your free speech. And now he's like, yeah, the government will take care of the regulations on AI. I'm totally behind it. Bullshit, bro. All a load of bullshit. This whole thing's been a load of bullshit. Jesus fucking Cars Christ. are heavily regulated. Communications are heavily regulated. Rockets and aircraft are heavily regulated. Um, the, the general philosophy about regulation is that when something is a danger to the public... Dude is just a total huckster. From top to bottom, a total embarrassing huckster. ...that there needs to be some uh, government oversight. Um, so I think, in, in my view, AI is more dangerous than nuclear bombs. And we regulate nuclear bombs. You can't just go make a nuclear bomb in your backyard. That's what you think. Um, I think we should have some kind of regulation with AI. Now, this tends to cause the AI accelerationists to get up in arms um, because they think AI is sort of heaven, basically. Um, but you typically don't like regulation. You've pushed back on regulators for the most part. Yeah, I knew it. He knows it. This guy knows exactly what he's doing. This guy's a killer interviewer. I got to say. He, mad, mad respect for this interviewer. In the world of Tesla, in the world, so many, so many instances where we read articles about you pushing back on the regulators. I'm so curious why in this instance. Oh my God, so true. 85D2D Derek says, the thing I love about all these billionaire morons fear of AI is they finally hypothetically have to imagine themselves being subjected to the standard human experience under capitalism. Nailed it. Bull's eye. Literally Fucking nailed it. Banger, 85D2D Derek. Now you own one of these businesses. As I said a moment ago, um, uh, you, one should not uh, take what is viewed in the media as being uh, the whole picture. Um, there huh? are literally hundreds, uh, I, this is probably not an exaggeration, so there are probably 100 million regulations that, that my companies comply with. And they're probably a hundred million regulations, dude. Come on, you're just ass. What an ass poll. Five that we don't. And if there, if, if we disagree with some of those regulations, it's because we think the regulation that is meant to do good. There's like um, there's like nineteen Brazilian. Doesn't actually do good. But that's it is an not interesting thing. Defying because, regulations for the sake of. But the, the question is, if, if there are compliance. laws and rules. No, maybe 40 gajillion. 
whether the idea is that you're making the decision that the law and the rule shouldn't be the law and the rule, and then, right? Isn't no, I'm saying you're fundamentally mistaken, and, and, and you, it should be obvious that you're mistaken. Um, my company's uh, automotive is heavily regulated. Uh, we would not be allowed to put cars on the road if we did not comply with this vast body of regulation. Now, you could, you could fill up the stage with uh, uh, literally... Also, it's really funny that he's on here boasting about uh, the fact that he only breaks five major regulations, as if that's not going to immediately give uh, actual due cause for all regulators to super audit his companies. Actually incredible. Actual mega brain play. You know, six foot high... With the, the, the regulations that you have to comply with to ma make a car, right. uh, would make, you, you could have a room full of phone books. That's how, many, that's how big the regulations are. And if you don't comply with all of those, you can't sell the car. And if we don't comply with all the, the regulations for rockets or for Starlink, they shut us down. So in fact, I am incredibly compliant with regulations. Now, once in a while, there'll be something that I disagree with. The reason I would disagree with this is because I think once in a while I get caught in the city morgue with a space heater and everybody won't shut up about it forever. The regulation in that particular case, in that rare case, does not serve the public good. And therefore, I think it is my obligation uh, to object to a regulation that is meant to serve the public good, but doesn't. That's the only time I object, not because I seek to object. I, in fact, I'm incredibly rule-following. Cookie, that was Bluntman. That was his last name. Yep. Let me ask you a separate question, a social media-related question. We've been talking about TikTok today, um, ahead of the election. Sir, sure. uh, TikTok. TikTok is... What do you think of TikTok? Do you think it's a national security threat? I don't use TikTok. Um, Say that again? You don't? I don't personally use it. I don't... Um, but for, for people that, for, for, for teenagers and people in their 20s, they seem almost religiously addicted to TikTok. Uh, oh, dude, come on. Like, I don't disagree that people have a problem with TikTok and that, but it's literally no different than fucking Facebook at the time. It's no different than, than, than every other thing that's come before. World of Warcraft and all these other things. It's not fucking religious addiction. They just like the app and they're bored out of their minds because the American social space has been fucking devastated because they live in car hell and there's nowhere to go do anything else. So they watch TikTok. It's not religious. Come on. Um, some people will, will watch TikTok for like two hours a day. Um, this interview is two hours and it's on Twitter. Does that mean that we watched Twitter for two hours a day? Okay, come on, man. Come on. I stopped using TikTok when I felt the AI probing my mind, and I don't... It made Have me a good night, Emu. I'll get to the email um, as soon as I can, all right? So I stopped using I it. I can't make a promise about tonight, um, but I'll get to it when I can. I mean, and in terms of anti-Semitic content, I mean, TikTok is rife with that. It has, it has the most... Oh, do, ooh, he, he messed up. He pivoted back to the thing he tried to get away from. Now they're back on it. Oh, that's a bad move. Viral anti-Semitic content uh, by good, far. Good for us, though. Let's hear it. But do you think the Chinese uh, government is using it to manipulate the minds of Americans? No. Is that something that you think we should worry about? I mean, you have, I you have different I states I, I that are trying to ban it. I don't think this is a, some Chinese government plot. Um, but it, 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 it is... The, the TikTok algorithm is entirely AI-powered. So it is really just trying to find the most viral thing possible. I don't think that's true. I don't think TikTok is entirely AI powered. In fact, one of the um, one of the big controversies at TikTok in recent memory was the fact that TikTok um, that uh, employees like management and executives at TikTok were able to explicitly intervene. They had the ability to basically uh, promote uh, channels that they wanted to with incredible ease like they if they had a family member who made a channel and they wanted more people to see that they could just basically press a button and that channel would get served in the algorithm more it was a huge controversy like five months ago but it's it's what is going to keep you glued to the screen that's not that's ai it. um now the on on sheer numbers um 
There are on the order of two billion Muslims in the world, and I think, uh, uh-huh. you know, m- much smaller number of Jewish people. <laughs> what, 20 million? Something. What? What? That's just, that's just explicit racism. So he's trying to say that, 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 is he trying to say that all Muslims all hate Jewish people? Ah, dude, come on. This is crazy. Oh man, this is a gold mine. This, this interview right here is going to be farmed forever. Uh, Many orders of magnitude fewer. So if you just look at, at content production, just right. on sheer numbers basis, this is going to be overwhelmingly anti-Semitic. Let me ask just you, on a number. Me... Because there's more Muslims in the world? Dude, you're the anti-Semite. It's not the Muslims who, 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 got, who are in hot water right now with all the advertisers for boosting Hitler shit. It's you, motherfucker. It's you. What are you fucking talking about? Let me ask you a political question. Um, oh, man. And I've been trying to square this oh, one in my head for a long time. Oh, this is incredible. Yeah. In the last incredible. two or three years, you have moved decidedly to the right, I think. Have I? Well, we can discuss this. I think that you have uh, been espousing and promoting uh, a number of, of, of Republican candidates and, and others. You've been very frustrated with the Biden administration over, I think, unions and uh, feeling... Uh, like they uh, did not respect uh, what you've created. I well, know. I mean, with, without any, uh, doing nothing to provoke the Biden administration, they held an electric vehicle summit at the White House and specifically refused to let Tesla attend. This was in the first six months of the administration. Um, and we inquired, we're like, we literally make more electric cars than everyone else combined. Why are we not allowed? Why are you only letting your, uh, Ford GM Chrysler and UAW, and you're specifically disallowing us from the EV summit at the White House. We'd, we'd done nothing to provoke them. Um, then uh, Biden went on to add insult to injury um, and publicly said that GM was leading the electric car revolution. This was in the same quarter that Tesla made 300,000 electric cars and GM made 26. Does that seem fair to you? So, but, but tell me this then. It, it doesn't seem fair. Um, and, right. and, and I've asked it repeatedly, and you've probably seen me. And, and by the way, I have seen Silicon Valley, and yes, yes. I had a great relationship with Obama. So there was not a. So, but, but, you know, then, but then I, there's I voted this. for Obama. I stood, stood, in hours for six, I stood in line for six hours to shake Obama's hand. Okay. So, but, so, okay, so let me just ask on a personal level. Uh, this, I can see it in your face. This, this hurt you personally. And it hurt the company, too. Is that stat even correct about electric cars? That Tesla has more on the road than everybody else combined? Is that actually true? I can't find, I can't find confirmation of that. I don't know if that's true. They do seem to have a lot on the road. That is true. Maybe there's another reason. And it was an insult to... You know, Tesla has 140,000 employees. Okay, of, of the half of them are in the United States. Tesla has created more. Also, ma- this was a question about unions. This was a question specifically about unions, and he just literally didn't answer the question, and instead is whining about Biden. Manufacturing jobs and everyone else combined. So let me ask this then: you, you've devoted at least the last close to 20 years of your life, if not more, to uh, the climate, climate change, uh, trying to get Tesla off the ground, in part to improve climate. You've talked about that. Uh, yeah, a real right-wing motive. <gasps> I have a new fan! Oh my goodness! The kitties always love watching my stream. Yay! What a cutie! Cats love my streams. They love my streams. At- it's so amazing. I get so many pictures of people's cats loving to watch my streams. What can I say? I have, a, I, have a, I have cat whispering energy. Hi, kitties. You're all beloved, and I would pet you and give you yummy tuna treats if I could. Repeatedly. <laughs> Got far right, if no, anything. No, I understand that. 
And then it's so, so it's, 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 it's right. reverse psychology next level. Well, no, but so here's then the question, which is how do you square the support that you have given? Uh, I believe you were at a fundraiser uh, for uh, uh, Viva Gramaswamy, for example, who says that yeah. the climate, uh, climate issue uh, is a hoax, right? Yeah, I disagree with him on that. I, but I would think that that would be such a singular issue for you. I would think that, uh, that the climate issue would be such a singular issue for you that actually it would disqualify almost anybody who, who didn't take that issue seriously. Well, I haven't endorsed anyone for, for president. I mean, I wanted to hear what Vivek had to say because um, I think some of his things are, some of the things he says, I think are pretty solid. Um, you know, he is How long is this interview? Uh, we got about... We got about 20, we got about 20 more minutes in it. So in about government overreach, um, about government control of information. The, I mean, the, it's, the, it's, the degree it's, to which- This has been, I'm, I'm, this has been a long interview, but it's been God tier. I'm not gonna lie. This has been a fucking, uh, this has been an amazing gold mine of, of just peering into the, the hilariously sludgy mind of Elon Musk. And I've loved every minute of it. Which, uh, old Twitter was basically a sock puppet of the government was ridiculous. Um, a sock puppet? Oh my God. Um, this is so stupid. So, you know, it, it seems to me that... Anybody, every single person who's used Twitter before Elon was here knows it wasn't a fucking sock puppet of the U.S. government. That's absolutely deranged. Hilarious. There's, there, there's a, a very severe violation of the First Amendment. Uh, and yes, as Gayfish points out, he has, he complies with all the government takedown requests. He's the same. There's no, there's been no change in the amount of government involvement. None. Um, in terms of how much government control, uh, how, how much control the government had over... Yes, they literally banned Donald Trump while he was president. How can you even say that it was a sock puppet of the U.S. government when they banned the president of the United States? It's just genuinely insane. We're getting to the point where he's just like... He lives in such a fictional world and he's constantly lying so much. It's like listening to a Trump speech, except oddly less entertaining. It's entertaining in a different way. It's, it's still very entertaining, but it's entertaining in a different way. Based seamstress, uh, that's the wise position to be in. Yep. Twitter, um, and uh, it no longer does. So, you know, there's a reason for the First Amendment. Um, the reason for the First Amendment for freedom of speech is because the, the, the people that immigrated. Oh yeah, t true. He also fucking did this shit in Turkey as well. This country uh, came from places where there was not freedom of speech, and and they were like, you know what, we we we, we got to make sure that that's constitutional, um, because where they came from, if they said something, they'd be put in prison, or there'd be, uh, you know, something bad would happen to them. So. Uh, and freedom of speech, you have to say, when is it relevant? It's only relevant when, when someone you don't like can say something you don't like, or it, ha it has no meaning. Um, and, oh. and, and as soon as you sort of, you know, throw in the towel and concede to censorship, it is only a matter of time before someone censors you. And that is why we have the First Amendment. Um, could you see yourself voting? Here's an interactive graph from the Department of Energy. Tesla's Model 3 sells the most, but there were a lot of sales for the decade prior to that release in 2018. It's hard to say, though, if that means there are more Teslas on the road than any other EV, or if that's just what people have been buying a lot of since 2018. Okay. He censors critiques of Modi for the same reason. He just likes fascists. Yeah, that's obvious. He definitely has a soft spot for fascists. Remember when he remember when he was using the platform to say that he was going to coup other countries just because he could for President Biden if if it's if it's a Biden Trump election for example I think I would not vote for Biden <laughs> you'd vote for Trump I'm not saying I'd vote for Trump but I mean this is this is definitely a difficult choice yeah you know, would, <laughs> would you uh, would you vote for Nikki Haley? Nikki Haley, by the way, wants uh, all social media um, names to be exposed, as you know. No, I think that's outrageous. Yeah, no, I, we, we, I'm not going to vote for some pro censorship candidate. Uh, like I said, I mean, I think these you have to you have to 
you know, consider that there is a lot of wisdom uh, in these amendments. You know, I mean, the Constitution. Interesting he didn't throw in with Trump. Yeah, I think he's, um, well, you have to remember, um, you have to remember, Ron DeSantis did his announcement on X, and he has, still has to pretend like that was a big success. He doesn't want to piss off DeSantis, so now he has to pretend, oh, I don't know. I don't know who I'm going to vote for. Yeah, he, he's, uh, you know, he's got to keep his fingers in his pies, so to say. He's a... Uh, Elon Musk is uh, not exactly got a lot of friends right now, so I imagine he probably doesn't want to piss off the guy who he who um, he's pretending had a successful launch, even though it was one of the funniest things that I've ever seen. Also, yes, Trump did make the post that Elon Musk was his bitch, but um, that was really good. Oh, do we have that? I want to read it if we have it. I think we got it. I think we have it. We have it. We got it. We got it. My favorite. When Elon Musk came to the White House asking me for help on all of his many government subsidized projects, whether it's electric cars that don't drive long enough, driverless cars that crash, or rocket ships to nowhere, without which subsidies he'd be worthless, and telling me how he was a big Trump fan and a Republican, I could have said, drop to your knees and beg, and he would have done it. Legendary. Just, oh man, listen. Donald Trump is, you, fuck, you all fucking know my enmity with Donald Trump, but let me tell you, this is one of the funniest things that any person has ever said in the context of our horrible existence, okay? Genuinely so incredible. Just obliterated. Look at that! Look at the picture! <laughs> the fucking picture! <laughs> look at that fucking smug! <laughs> he knows! He's like, you're gonna suck my dick, Elon. You're gonna be under the table in just a second, you twerp. You dork. I'll show you an electric charge port. Incredible, legendary. Constitution, um, and and uh, you know a lot of these, a lot of things that we take for granted here in the United States that don't even exist in Canada. There's not no constitutional right to freedom of speech in Canada. So you know, so, and and there's no Miranda rights in Canada. People like think like you know you have the right to remain silent. You don't actually in Canada. Um, so. You know, I'm half Canadian, I can you know, say these things off both. Um, but, you know, so, so like... I don't think that's accurate. Freedom of expression in Canada is protected as a fundamental freedom by Section 2 of the Can Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. In practice, the charter permits the government to enforce reasonable limits censoring speech. That's exactly the same as the United States. That's, like, identical. They don't have, they have a charter and not a, uh, they have a charter and not a bill of rights, but it's functionally the same structure. Whatever, let's continue. You, you just got, you, you, the freedom of speech is incredibly important. Um, even when people, say, and like, like I said, it's, it's, it's actually especially important. In fact, it is only relevant when uh, people you don't like can say things you don't like. And do you uh, think right now that they're meaningless? You think right now? Uh no, it's only relevant when it's not about you and you and 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 uh, and oh whether people can say things you don't like. It's about the government. It's with regard to a relationship to the government. It's the government is not and is not supposed to ideally be able to shut down critique of itself. It has to, it has nothing. I mean, it, I mean, it, it does. I guess uh, also permit between individuals but the the law is a governmental granted right you cannot be in, in, uh, persecuted by the government for saying certain things i don't know whatever he's fucking not this guy's brain is dripping out his ears the Jesus republican Christ. candidates for the democrats are more inclined i mean this is where you go to i assume to 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 woke and anti-woke and the mind virus issue that you've talked about which party do you think is, is, is more pro-freedom of speech, given all the things you've seen? Because yes. we also uh, see, you know, yes. DeSantis 
you know, preventing people from reading certain things. Maybe you, maybe you think that's, that's, that's correct. No. Uh, look. Oh, he's going to dodge we, it. We actually are in an odd situation here. Oh, is he going to dodge it? Is he going to dodge that? That's super direct. DeSantis is an explicitly anti-free speech president. Uh, presidential candidate, not a president. He's, he's a fucking uh, governor. But um, he's explicitly anti-free speech, aggressively anti-free speech, and now he's not even going to answer it. Where what a coward. The, uh, on balance, what a coward. Uh, the Democrats appear to be more pro-censorship than the Republicans. Uh, it, yak, used to be the opposite. it used to be, you know, the uh, left position was freedom of speech. Um, you know, uh, I believe at one point, um, the ACLU even de de defended the right of someone to claim that they were Nazi or something like that, you know? So, like, they, were, they, they really were... Uh, uh, obviously, people have the right to claim they... to make an identity claim about their beliefs. What the fuck? Uh, like, Idiot. The left. Idiot! Just actual moron. Drippingly, droolingly stupid. It was freedom of speech is, is, is fundamental. Um, and, uh, I mean, my at least perception, perhaps it isn't accurate, is that um, the pro-censorship is more on the left than, than the right. Um, we certainly get more complaints from the left than the right, let me put it that way. Um, so, um, but my aspiration for the X platform is that it is the best source of truth, or the least inaccurate source of truth. Um, and while, you know, I don't know... Yeah, exactly. High progressive is like, he just gave an explicit example of the right doing it. He doesn't care. He just, he just dodged that. He didn't even care. I'm not even going to engage. And the reason is because he doesn't actually fucking care about free speech. It's all a fucking smokescreen. He only became obsessed with freedom of speech when he realized he could use that as a uh, as a buzzword to get the support of the most dumbest people on the planet. He doesn't fucking give a shit, obviously. Otherwise, if uh, if you're su uh, supposedly a free speech crusader, it should be extremely concerning to you when a um when a governor uses ex explicitly uses executive power to put into place re extreme restrictions on access to literature, like actually stripping the access to books. That should be a huge free speech concern. But nah, this guy doesn't give a fucking shit. What he wants is he wants the free he wants the freedom to be able to say that he's a god among men that and and to, to be able to say he should be able to own children on the internet and have nobody criticize him. That's what he really wants. If you won't believe me or not, but I think honesty is the best policy, and I, I think that the truth will win over time. And the you know we've got this this great system, and it's getting better called Community Notes. Uh, which is fantastic, I think, at correcting uh, falsehoods uh, or, or adding context. In fact, we, we make a point of, of not removing anything, but only adding context. Now, that context could, could include that this is completely false, yes. and here's why. Um, and Remember, hold on, just a quick fact check moment. Remember that Elon Musk has, has used executive power to remove community notes on his own posts. So he's just full of shit full of it just fr like again bullshit from bottom to top top total snake oil salesman total fucking fraud of a man and 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 no one is immune to this i'm not immune to it advertisers are not immune to it in fact we've had community notes <laughs> which has caused us some loss in advertising speaking of loss in advertising revenue um when, when if a community note if an if, if if there's false advertising the community note will say this is false <laughs> and here is why. Um, I mean, like, and, and there's one specific example that is pu public knowledge, so I'll mention it, which is at one point uh, Uber had this ad uh, which said, earn like a boss. Uh, and it was community noted, if by boss you mean $12.47 an hour, <laughs> this, this did cause at least a temporary suspension of advertising from Uber. I, I got to ask um, you a question that might make everybody in the room <laughs> uncomfortable or not uncomfortable. But it goes to the free speech issue. Uh, the New York <laughs> Times company and the New York Times uh, newspaper, it appeared over the summer uh, to be throttled. What, what did? The New York Times. Uh, well, we, we do require that... Um, that everyone has to buy a subscription and we don't make exceptions for anyone. And, and I think if I want the New York Times, uh -oh. I have to pay for a subscription. And they don't give me a free subscription. 
So I'm not going to give them a free subscription. But were you but were you throttling the New York Times relative to other news organizations, relative to everybody else? Was it was it was it specific to the to the Times? They didn't buy a subscription. Dodging the question. Uh, by the way, it only costs like a thousand dollars a month. So if they just do that, then then they they're back in back in the saddle. But 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 you are so, saying that it was throttled. No, I'm saying. Did, I mean, was there a conversation that you had with somebody? You said, look. You know, un I'm unhappy with the Times. They should either be buying the subscription or I don't like their content or whatever. whatever. Any organization that refuses to buy a subscription uh, is, is, is not going to be recommended. But then what does that say about free speech? And what does well, that say about like a, amplifying free speech certain, is not certain exactly voices? Free. It costs a little bit. Right, but that <laughs> wow. He really thought that he really he re, he really gave it. <laughs> he really hit us with that one with that one. Damn. <laughs> that's it. But that's it. Interesting. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like in uh, South Park uh, right. where they say. Yeah. <laughs> now he's making a South Park reference. Oh man, it all it's all coming together. It's all coming together. Respect my authority. You know. Freedom isn't free, it costs a buck or five, or whatever. Um, um, so, but it's pretty cheap, okay. Um, it's low cost, low cost freedom. I got a couple more questions um, for you. Um, you're headed back to Texas. <laughs> Is that Team America? Man, that's pathetic. Uh, after this, freedom uh, cheap. to launch uh, the Cybertruck. Yeah. It's gonna be a big launch. But I wanted to ask you right now, uh, more broadly just about the, the car business and what you see actually happening. Um, and specifically, the government put in place lots of policies, as you know, to try to encourage uh, more EVs. And one of the things that's happened uniquely is you have now a lot of car companies saying, actually, this is too ambitious for us. These plans are too ambitious. 4,000 dealers, I don't know if you saw just yesterday, sent a letter to the White House saying, this has gone too far. You're going too far. You no, had this- Anti-EV? It was, an, it, it was uh, this is going too fast, too far, and that there's not enough demand. Our, uh, underneath all of this is this idea that maybe there's not enough demand for EVs, that the American public has not bought into the, I mean, they bought into it with, with, with your company, but they haven't bought into it broadly enough. Well, I think if, if you make a compelling electric car. Well, part of the problem is that most people can't afford an EV. Um, it is true that there are like, especially not a Tesla one, Teslas are luxury cars. They're all luxury cars, like um, all of them. There's no Tesla that's not a luxury car and they're priced like a luxury car. There are EVs that are cheaper, but they're still expensive. And a lot of people buy used cars because they don't buy a new car. If you're, um, I mean, hell, um, it, like, like, even if you're buying a used car, you might not have enough to buy an EV. You might be buying a really old car that's in good shape. Excuse me. Goodness. Mm. Bless. Oh my goodness. Bless me. Let's continue. A lot of people will buy it. No question about it. Um, I mean, electric car sales in China are gigantic. Um, that's by okay. far the biggest category. Right. Um, and I think that would be the case. You know. Um, I mean, it's worth noting. Okay. So, so the, probably the best refutation of that is that the Tesla Model Y will be the best-selling car of any kind on Earth this year. Um... Of any kind, gasoline or otherwise. Is there another car company that you think is doing a good job with EVs? I mean, I think the Chinese car companies are extremely competitive. Um, by far, our toughest competition is in China. So, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people who, who are out there who think that the top 10 car companies are going to be Tesla followed by nine Chinese car companies. Um, I think they might not be wrong. So, um, China is super good I at manufacturing and true. the work ethic is incredible. So, um, you know, like if we consider different leagues of competitiveness, mm -hmm. At Tesla, we consider the Chinese league to be the most competitive. Um, and by the way, we do very well in China because our... He claimed this. This was a claim from, from Elon Musk. He's citing himself. Let, let me see. 
Elon Musk claimed the Model Y crossover EV was the best-selling single model sold worldwide in the first quarter of 2023. That's not just the best-selling Tesla model, it's the best-selling anything, more than the Toyota Corolla or any other traditional high-volume commodity or truck. The problem is, on all the charts we could find from Tesla, as well as from uh, fawning electric vehicle sites reporting on them, the company groups Model Y production sales with the Model 3 production and sales. Tesla delivered 4, 412,000 Models 3 and Y globally in the first quarter, and we cannot find the breakdown between the two. We reached out to Toyota for Corolla numbers, and the automaker reports reporting 740,000 Corollas worldwide in the first quarter of this year, counting all versions, including the Cross. That's about 75% more than Tesla, even if you lump the Model 3 in with the Model Y. Sorry, Elon, not even close. He just made that up and lied. You're just a fucking liar. Let's continue. China, China team is the best China. Team How China. worried are you that, so, the, that the it's literally it, every article, every other article that I just quickly scanned besides that was just citing his claim. They cite his claim for that. They don't actually look at the actual numbers. That was the first article I could find that was trying to dig into the numbers. Just as a quick Google search. Unionize, unionization effort that just took place. Uh, at well, not, I shouldn't say effort, but the the the, the new the, the new wages and the like at GM and Ford, are, that they're coming for you. And they are coming for you. What is that going to mean to you and your business? Well, I, I mean, I, I think it's generally not good to have an adversarial relationship uh, between um, people on the line, you know, one group at the company and another group. In fact, I mean, I, I, I disagree with the idea of unions, but perhaps for a reason that is different than people may expect, which is, I just don't like anything which creates kind of a lords and peasants sort of thing. And <laughs> no, dude, come on, come the fuck on. <laughs> I don't like unions because I don't like creating a lords and peasants situation. There should only be lords and the peasants should not be considered people at all. And I think the unions naturally try to create <laughs> negativity in a company and, and create a kind of, sort of lords and peasants uh, situation. Uh, there, are, there are many people. The guy's laughing. The interviewer is laughing right now. People at Tesla who have come, gone from working on the line to being in senior management. There is no lords and peasants. Everyone eats at the same table. Everyone parks in the same parking lot. You know, at GM, there's a special elevator for only for senior executives. We have no such thing at Tesla. Um, what does that have to do with anything? You know, the, and the thing is that I actually know the people on the line because I worked on the line, and I walked the line, and I slept in the factory, and I, and I worked beside them. So, I'm no stranger to them. Um, and, and there are actually many times where I've said, well, can't we just hold a union vote? But apparently a company is not allowed to hold a union vote. So it has to be somehow called for, but the unions can't do it. So I said, well, let's just hold a vote and see what happens. Um. Um, the, the actual problem is, is, is the opposite. It's not that people are trapped at Tesla building cars. The, 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 tra the challenge is, is how do we retain great people to do the hard work of building cars when they have like six other opportunities that they can do that are easier? That's the actual difficulty, is, is that building cars is hard work and, and, and there are much easier jobs. And I just want to say that I'm incredibly appreciative of those who build cars, and they know it, um, the, you know. So the, there's, there's, I don't know. Maybe there will be unionized. If, 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 if I say like, if Tesla gets unionized, it will be because we deserve it and we failed in some way. Um, but we, we, we certainly try hard to, you know, ensure the prosperity of everyone. We give everyone stock options. Um, We've, we've made many people. Yeah, isn't, te isn't Tesla like absolutely mired in labor controversies? Like they have like a crazy burnout rate where there's tons and tons of uh, turnover rate is what I'm looking for, not burnout rate. I saw the burnout comment in chat. But isn't the, um, isn't the turnover rate at Tesla for Tesla like ridiculously high by comparison to most uh, uh, car companies? Well, who are just working the line. He literally has them, according to Business Insider, he literally has the most unsafe factories in the entire business. That, that's what I, I was under that impression.
Bitewise Marissa with the tier one sub, thank you so much. By the way, if you've been enjoying this absolutely hilarious reaction, please make sure that you are subscribed to Demon Mama and make sure that you press like on this wonderful video. It would mean the world to me. Also, I've been trying to, I've been trying to do better on this and remind people, we do have a Patreon. It is linked in every video description. Please consider joining it. Uh, every little bit counts because I'm a, uh, a viewer supported show. You don't have to give much. You can just throw a couple bucks in as a tip, like you're tipping your, the, the bar, uh, the band at your local bar, and it would mean the world to me. Thank you so much. Let's continue. Who didn't even know what stocks were, we've made them millionaires. Um, um, so we're gonna run out of time. Final couple quick, quick questions. When do you have the time to, to tweet or to post? How, how do, I, 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 I actually think about it all the time. As I said, well, I, I use it- I the bathroom sometimes. I use it all the time. Meaning, if, okay. if, we were to, if we were to open up our phones and look at the screen time, what does yours look like? Well, about every three hours, I uh, make a trip to the lavatory. And that's um, the only time you do this? <laughs> Seems like you're on there a lot. Um, no, I mean, I, I, there'll be like brief moments between meetings. Uh, hey, Dear Mama, how come you don't have an ad button like Vosh? I do. Eat ads. I just did it. I just don't do it very often. I just basically never press it. I really should. I just hit the add button. But there's this thing that happens that makes me really bothered, which is that when I press the add button, a bunch of people miss what I'm saying. They miss out because it plays an ad. And it sucks. It's, it sucks to like miss a, a, a second, you know? I should do it on bathroom time. I really should. That actually might be a smart way because people probably won't tune out for an ad. They might though. Yeah. I will say um the the like the bulk of of our channel income comes from uh our very lovely uh well, the YouTube side. Obviously, Almost, almost all of my support comes directly from you guys donating through Super Chats or on the website or through the Patreon, mostly through the website. The website donors are the number one person making me have a good living. Um, premium views are incredibly good for the channel. I, I probably do need to start putting in um, ads more often, but you know, it's just how it is. Let's continue, let's continue. Um. Good night, Ron's KFC. I hope you have a wonderful night. Get some rest. You deserve it, and much love to you. I mean, it's not, obviously, I've I've like seventeen jobs, so you know, and um, no, no. I guess technically it's work at this point. It is, but uh, I, but I'm thinking just in terms of your mind share. I mean, by the way, there's a lot of people who should be working who are on, who are on yeah, this. Yeah, te technically, posting on Twitter is or, or X is is work. It does count as work. So that's you know, there's that. Um, uh, but no, I mean, I, I think I'm on, well, I, I guess usually probably I'm on for longer than I think I am. But what, I know, but uh, do you think that's you, five hours a day? Thing. Oh no, he goofed up. He dead named his own site. Transphobe moment. If Four you look at the, the screen time of like number of hours per week, sometimes that's a scary number. Um, it's probably, I don't know, it's a little over an hour a day or something like that. Bullshit. Dude, this guy tweets all the time and he, he's always in the comments getting mad at shit. Bullshit, he's bullshitting so hard right now. This is the biggest lie he's told the entire time, believe it or not. He's told so many outrageous, unbelievable, uh, giant fibs. He's, th he's told some real fucking whoppers. This, uh, this, this, this little uh, interview, but this is, the biggest, this is the biggest fucking stinker he's laid the entire day. This one is just stinks to high heaven. Everyone fucking knows he doesn't spend an hour a day on Twitter. This motherfucker's like an eight hour Twitter user. He's the most terminally online fucking dork you've ever seen. Just an hour a day. If we really looked at this together, do you have your phone with you? Yeah. You wanna look? Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. You ready? Screen time. Hit yeah, general. Screen time. Sometimes this is a scary number, but... I know, that's why I, I thought... Uh... 
Uh, I, I just got a new phone, so I think this is not accurate because it says I'm a, it's one minute. <laughs> he just wiped it. This bitch wiped the shit. Oh my god, he wiped it. He wiped it so he wouldn't have it. Oh man! Pretty sure it's more than that. Oh, wait, it's a, over the week. Right, there we go. Yeah, go go to, go to the week. Oh, okay, maybe he's just a boomer. He might just be a boomer. Oh, okay, so it's, it's still wrong. It's it's more than four minutes. <laughs> I, I just got a new phone, so this is not accurate. It literally says four minutes. New phone. Tim Cook said you that phone. New phone. New phone. Who does? Yeah. <laughs> I should ask, by the way, because I just mentioned Tim Cook. Do you feel like you're going to have to have a battle with him eventually? Is that is that the next fight? I mean, I over the app store. The, I he one hundred percent just wiped it. He popped it open and he hit clear, clear use time right before that happened. Oh man, that is, that is so fucking crazy. Can we take a second to enjoy that this dude is roasting his fucking ass live on stage? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm basking in it. The reason we're still watching this shit ass interview is because it's the, one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Seeing this loser squirm is incredible. Seeing him get like three laughs from the audience um, amidst like coughs and cell phone calls is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my entire life. He definitely fucking cleared that. Idea of making a phone, oh, what do you mean like? No, 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 of the app store. Did you ever what? make a phone? Sam Altman's apparently thinking about making a phone with Johnny Ive. I mean, I don't think there's a real need to make a phone. Uh, I mean, if there's a essential need to make a phone, I'll make a phone, but I got a lot of fish to fry, so. Uh, I mean, I do think there's a, there's, a, there's a fundamental challenge that phone makers have at this point because you've got uh, basically a black rectangle. Um, you know, how do you make that better? So do you want to do that? What does that, what does that look like in, in, in Elon's head? No, that's literally, yeah, good, good phrase. Uh, in the head, a new link. Well, there so we go. That, that we, so, I, we need to touch uh, that yes, before we, it's over. We're, we're, you know, the, the best interface would be a, a neural interface directly to your brain. That is the most nightmarish thing I can possibly imagine. Can you imagine going to lay down at night and forgetting to put your brain on silent? And so you lay down and your, your scar, your brain scar is itching from the infection because the shitty doctors that inserted the neural link into your brain didn't do a very good job and you're like, oh, I'm so tired and you roll over and you fall asleep and in the depth of your dreams, your entire psyche is destroyed because the neural link is ringing a, it's sending an audio signal to every fucking neuron and synapse in your brain. Every single nerve in your body starts a light as if a fucking phone is ringing into your fingertips. Incredible, incredible. Yeah, and then you get a, and then you get a fucking PragerU ad afterwards. Hi, this is Dennis Prager. Use pain relief now or whatever the fuck it's called. It does something. It makes you feel better. Buy my fucking shit. Um, so that, that would be a neural link. How far away do you think from that and how, how excited or scary does that seem to be? And we read these headlines, obviously, about uh, monkeys who died, as you know. How, what should we think about that? Uh, yeah, actually, the, 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 this is... The, 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 the USDA inspector who, mm -hmm. who came by... The Neuralink facilities, literally said, in her entire career, she has never seen a better animal care facility. Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah, totally. They came, they came to my animal torture facility, I mean, my animal surgical facility, and they said it was the most beautiful animal surgeries you've ever seen. Just, like, they'd never seen anything like it. Perfect surgeries everywhere, nothing like it. Never in history has there been an animal surgery center with as few dead monkeys. We had a few, but there was none, like basically none in comparison to others. It is, we are the nicest to animals that you could possibly be, even to the rats and mice, even though they- what if, what about, what if you just didn't torture them? What if you didn't stick your shit ass technology into their head? That's significantly nicer, you fucking freak. I did the plague and everything. Um, so, uh, it is, it is like monkey paradise. Um, so, uh, the, 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 the thing that gets conflated is that there were some terminal monkeys where, you know, this is long, this is actually several years ago, where the monkeys were about to die. And we're like, okay, we've got an experimental device. It's the kind of thing we should only put on a monkey that's about to die. And then 
you know, now the monkey died, but it didn't die because of the neural link. It died because it was, you know, had a terminal case of cancer or something like that. So, uh... Bullshit. Bullshit. Uh, neural link has, has never caused the death, death of a monkey. Best, I, I, unless they're, they're hiding something from me, it has never caused the death of a monkey. And in fact, uh, we've, we've now had monkeys with uh, neural link implants for, like, two, three years. Okay. And they're doing great. So, um, and we've even replaced the neural link. Monkey health records show there is no evidence that the 12 animals were close to death, as Musk, ha Musk has stated. Racist macaques, macaques also often live to 25 years in captivity, with some living to as old as 40. But the average age of the 12 monkeys killed by Neuralink was 7.25 years. Hmm. Fascinating. Fascinating. Twice. Uh, and, it's, and, and we're getting ready to do the, to do the first uh, implants in hopefully in a few months. Um, the, the, the early implementations of Neuralink, I think, are unequivocally good. Speaking of the double-edged sword, I think these early implementations are single-edged sword um, because the first... Don't worry, everyone. At our, animal, at our animal paradise facility, we only put the Neuralinks into Nazi monkeys. You don't have to worry about it. Yes, they died, but don't worry. They kept Sieg Heiling. You don't have anything to worry about. It's the most lovely paradise. We, we don't... Well, it's a paradise, but we don't want it. We don't. I don't want to give you the idea that we're putting Nazi monkeys in paradise, but it's a paradise, and the only ones who died were the Nazi monkeys. Implementations will be to enable people who are have lost the brain-body connection uh, to be able to operate a computer or a phone faster than someone who has hands that that work. Um, so you can imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than someone um, who had full full body functionality. How incredible that would be. Well, that's what this device will do. Um, and yeah, it'll let you log on to Twitter and read, uh, forcibly read a bunch of blue checks saying poop, fart, and posting images of Goatsy and then posting ads for Ivermectin. How incredible. I, I, bet, I bet Stephen Hawking would love that existence. We should have a proof of that in a human, uh, hopefully in a few months. Um, it already works in, a, in, in monkeys and works quite well. Um, with monkeys that can play video games just using, just by thinking. Um, so then the next application after um, the, the sort of those, you know, dealing with tetraplegics and quadriplegics, quadriplegics is going to be um, vision. Vision is the, the next thing. So it's like if somebody is like, has um, lost both eyes or the optic nerve has failed, basically where there's they have no possibility of having sort of some ocular correction. The, the, that will be the next thing uh, for Neuralink is a direct uh, vision interface. And, and in fact, then you could be like Geordie LaForge from Star Trek. You could, you could see in like any frequency, actually. You could see in radar if you want. Two final questions, uh, and then we're going to uh, end this conversation. Which I think has taken everybody inside the mind of Elon Musk today. Not as well as Neuralink will. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it actually goes to self-driving cars and vision and everything else. Um, Do you think he's getting sad now? I feel like I feel like that at this point, it, like our interviewer, our our protagonist here, might be just starting to feel sad. Um, and I asked this question of Pete Buttigieg, uh, transportation secretary. It's actually something you retweeted, so I wanted to ask you the same question. Um, there's a big question about autonomous vehicles and the safety of them, but there's also a question about when it will be politically palatable in this country for people to die in cars that are controlled by computers, which is say we have 35, 40,000 deaths every year in this, in this country. Yeah. If you could bring that number down to 10,000, 5,000, that might be a great thing. But do we think that the country will accept the idea that 5,000 people, that your family uh, might have, have, have perished in, a, in a, a vehicle as a result not of a human making a mistake, but of a computer? Um, yes, well, first of all, humans are terrible drivers. Damn, that's a actually a really good question. 
it's a uh, it's a very it's a it's a very interesting question because it's gonna I, I can't oh, I can't wait let's see let's see what he has to say that's a fantastic question. Um, so people text and drive they drink and drive they get into arguments they you know um, you know they do all sorts of things in cars that they should not do. Um, yeah, like turning on the auto drive feature, like that viral video that's been going around from a couple days ago. The one that I referenced earlier because Tesla car, the Tesla car blasted them through a fucking busy uh, intersection and nearly crashed the car four times because of camera errors. Or maybe it was AI errors. Who knows, really? It's a black box in there, isn't it? So it's actually... I still can't believe that he's allowed to beta test his cars on public roads. Yeah, that's because of fucking corruption. That's because people buy into his cult and he throws a lot of money around. It's actually fucking obscene that he's allowed to use American roads and lives as a fucking beta test space for his shit-ass cars that blow up all the time and don't get the battery life that they're supposed to. Remarkable that there are not more deaths than there are. Um, what we'll find with computer driving is, I think, probably an order of magnitude reduction in deaths. Um, I think and now and the US has actually far fewer deaths per capita than the rest of the world. If you go worldwide, I think there's something close to a million deaths per year due to uh, automotive uh, accidents. Um, so I think computer driving will probably drop that by 90% or more. It won't, it won't be perfect, but it'll be Ass pull. He's pull. Just uh, my sources that I made it the fuck up. Where'd I have that? My sources that I made it the fuck up. Ten times. And better. do you think that the public will, will accept that? Do you think the government will accept that? Well, at, at, in, in large numbers, the it, it will simply be so obviously true um, that it, it it really cannot be denied. And what do you um, think? I know we've talked about the timeline before, and I know people have criticized you uh, for putting out timelines that may not uh, have come true just yet. But what do you think it really yeah, I mean, is? And, I mean, and, and by the way, do you feel like, do you ever say to yourself, oh, I shouldn't have said that? Sure, of course. Um, wait, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm optimistic about, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think I'm like naturally optimistic about timescales. And if I was not naturally optimistic, I wouldn't be doing the things that I'm doing. Um, I, I mean, I certainly wouldn't have started a rocket company or a, like right. a car company if I were, didn't have some sort of pathological optimism, frankly. Um, so, um, as you pointed out, many people said they would fail, and in fact, I, I, actually, I agreed with them. I said, yes, it probably will fail. And they're like, hmm, okay. Um, but I, I thought SpaceX and Tesla had less than a 10% chance of success when we started them. Um, so, yeah, anyway, but, but the self-driving thing is, is, I've been optimistic about it. We certainly, um, made a lot of progress. If anybody has tried, the ver has been using the sort of full self-driving beta, the progress is, uh, you know, every year has been substantial. Um, it's really now at the point where in most places, it'll take you from one place to another with no interventions. Um, and the data is unequivocal that... Not, not what a lot, not the experience of everybody. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying, there is a lot of credible videos out there of people running into pretty fucking severe self-driving issues. There's been a lot of fucking deaths this year and last year with the self-driving bullshit. This stuff is a, this is, this is a salesman trying to sell you something eh, over people's dead bodies. Uh, that supervised full self-driving is somewhere around four times safer, or maybe more than, than just a human driving by by themselves. Um, so I'm, I'm raised by field mice with a tier one sub. Thank you very, very much. I'm, I, you know, I, I can certainly see it coming. What, 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 actually, right. really, but do you think it's another five or ten years? I mean, people. No, say no, no, definitely not. Uh, definitely not. Um, and do you feel like investors have invested in something that that hasn't happened yet? Is, is that is that fair to them? And that's the other question that people have about that. Well, I mean, I think the, the, they've, they've all, with rare, rare exception, uh, thought it wasn't happening. So they were investing in, despite thinking, they're very BRB. clear that they don't think it's Perfect. real. So they're not saying, oh, we, we just believe everything Elon says, hook, line, and sinker. Uh, uh, but the, the thing is that 
I mean, I would be a fair criticism of me to say that I am late, but, it is, but I always deliver in the end. Let me ask you the final question. I took note of this. It was November 11th, and you took to Twitter, and you wrote only two words. You said, amplify empathy. Right. I was taken aback by that, given all the things that have been going on in the world. Um, do you remember what you were thinking? Well, I think it's quite literally... Ampli I understand it, but do, what, was, what was going on? Why, why did you write that? Well, I was encouraging people to amplify empathy. Uh, literally. I, I tend to be quite literal. Um, but were, was there something that had happened I mean, that you had seen uh, that you said to yourself, I, need to, I want to say that? I think I was talking to some friends, and we all agreed that we should try to amplify empathy, and so I wrote amplify empathy. Um, if you wanted an unvarnished look inside the mind of Elon Musk, I think you just saw it. Look, sometimes uh, it's pretty simple, you know. <laughs> uh, Elon Musk, thank you very, very much for the conversation. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Here, take yeah. that with you for a second. I'm, me to take a big <laughs> I'm just going to say uh, a thank you to everybody who stuck around uh, for what has been a remarkable day. Uh, we are so appreciative of everybody uh, who has been with us uh, for so many years, coming back to this every year. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you had a great day, and uh, I hope we have an opportunity to do this again. Elon Musk, everybody, thank you. Damn. All right, we finished it, everybody. Leaving. We finished it. Um, all right, everybody. We finished it, just in time. Uh, who boy. All right. What to say about this? Uh, I feel like it's fairly self-evident. Um, uh, Elon Musk, this is like, in my opinion, this should be the nail in the coffin for anyone who's not completely stupid. There are people who I believe who might be unplugged and don't know what Elon Musk has been up to. But if anybody sees this and doesn't walk away going, oh my God, this guy is the most insane charlatan I've ever seen. Um, you're just stupid. That's just, that, that's the only answer. You would have to be an idiot to not watch this and go, oh man, this guy is the, is like dangerously stupid and dangerously dishonest. <sighs> I had fun though. And that's what matters the most. I love, I take a great pleasure in watching Elon Musk flounder um, after his insane behavior, his disgusting treatment of, uh, of damn near everyone at some point or another, his destruction of an otherwise fairly decent platform, uh, his constant stupid boosting of dangerous politics and, um, and union busting, his discriminatory practices, his endless lies, his charlatanry, and all of his other bullshit. It makes me happy to see him squirm. And I gotta say, um, I gotta say the, uh, the interviewer there, uh, Andrew Sorkin, did a really damn good job. That was an, an absolutely impressive interview, in my opinion. And I, I, I do compare this. In my mind, this reminds me of, like, the later interviews with, uh, Elizabeth Holmes, where she started to really lose control and was spinning out of control, and her ability to control the narrative was completely leaving her hands. Um... Good. Anyway, if you enjoyed this reaction, you should subscribe to my channel. This has been Demon Mama. You have been listening and hearing the signal. And you should subscribe. You have thoughts about what I said? Leave it in the comments below. Because your comments are very important to me. And I'm very, very good about responding to my comments. Additionally, you should consider subscribing to my Patreon or to my website. Because that's how you can support me on this viewer-supported show. Thank you very much.